That's a little tiny. Your your dog was it like a little tiny poodle or something? Smaller like that? than that. It's lops or something. I'm not or? saying. <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> That's it. You can't. Very small dog. It weighs about four four pounds. Oh, Is it housebroken? Of course. Because I was hoping not. Maybe it could take a big jubby. No, but somebody right was down the, there throwing tacos right. around on the right. road. I, I mean, wish it had really. gone into Dalts My and taken a big stool. Than that guy. <laughs> Wouldn't you love to see it walk into Dalts and just stool on the floor? Was well, that what they're afraid of? What the hell are they afraid of? <laughs> I know. What's why are they going to do? Destroy the building? Let, let me ask you this. Why can't He's you? He's going to kick your Seriously. ass. <laughs> you. can, can anybody help me? Why can't you bring a dog into a building? Is there, I mean, what well, is... Is this our new bit? Call John? Scott Mason. Hello. I actually did call Hello. Scott, Hello. and he's going to call us back and tell us. But the question, the real question, is why can you have a seeing eye dog, but no other kind of dog in the studio? Because what's what is it really that's different about a seeing eye dog? You can have a seeing eye yeah. dog. So yeah. you should have pretended you were blind. You know those shades. You actually have shades on already, in a certain way, like some rose-colored sunglasses. <laughs> why, can't, why don't you introduce our guest, poor man? I have. It's, bl it's Blondie. I'm going to throw up now, <laughs> <It's> okay? De <laughs> Deborah Harry is here. Where did your dog go? And then we'll we'll get right to the show. Never Where mind. Okay. What's the puppy's name? Never mind. Oh. It's never mind. Wow, that's an unusual <laughs> name. Anyway, good to see you here on Loveline. This Thank is you. This nice is amazing. I guess we also had a very angry Rodney who was, was <laughs> furious that uh, you were that he was she was appearing on our show and, right? and not before his before show. his show. Yeah. I don't blame him one single bit. I don't either. You know, I, politics really stink. Yeah, it does. Well, I'm excited to hear you give some love advice because you, you know, I interviewed you one time at the Coach House. I don't know if you even remember when you played there a few years ago. So, uh, I'll tell you what, let's take care of some business. And we got Deborah Harry here. She's. Are you playing around town or is this sort of a promotional thing? Oh, yeah, this is promo. This is bye, 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 sell, 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 hello, hello, whack, whack, whack. It's me. <laughs> quack, quack, quack. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there you go, man. A, a legend. One of the K-Rock legendary ladies. Gorgeous lady. And here's the phone oh, numbers. L.A. and Sangerba Valley. Butter me up. <laughs> also wearing a very tight T-shirt there, Debbie. Dr. Yeah, X. I know. The eyes are like like protruding very <laughs> pleasantly. What are you saying? <laughs> what do you mean? He's saying my tatas are okay. <laughs> They're huge. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, L.A. and San Gabriel Valley, 520-1067, Orange County, 977-1067, San Fernando Valley, 764-1067, or fax Debbie Harry, 818 or 213-5201-FAX. Or 310-5201-FAX. You don't have, you can three. do it? Yeah. 818-213 or 310. I can't wait to hear this woman give love advice. Sure. I am psyched. Let's get on with it. So, anyway, we'll take care of some business. And um, do we have, a, we have a song in here, right? Two of them lined up. The new song is queued up. I'll tell you what. Let's play your new oh, song okay. right now. Then we'll do the business. Tell us the name of your new song, Debbie. Uh, uh, I can see clearly. Okay. It's Debbie Harry, solo, on 106.7 K-Rock's Love Line. Without you in my way 
Provided with a guide, trackers, and the weapons of your choice. But what they're hunting is humans. We pride ourselves in hunting only combat veterans. Now, the one thing they never counted on is about to happen. Their hunts become a game of chance. What kind of a name is Chance? My mama took one. Jean-Claude Van Damme is Chance Boudreau. He's obviously not someone we should underestimate. He's hard to find. We are stalking an exceptional opponent. He's hard to kill. I want him stepped on hard. Jean-Claude Van Damme is the hard target. And hunting season opens this Friday. How does it feel to be hunted? From internationally acclaimed action director John Woo, hard target, rated R. Starts this Friday at theaters everywhere. You miss me. So, you think you know all about roller coasters. The loops, the whips, the whirls. And you think you know where the hairiest, scariest metal monsters are? Wrong! Because the best roller coaster today is the roller coaster of tomorrow. But it doesn't roll or coast. And it's not where you think it is. It's at Universal Studios. Universal Studios. It's not on wheels, not on a track. It's out in space. It's back to the future. And it's like a flying roller coaster. Only way better. Because while it's slamming and jamming your body, it's scrambling your brain with a high speed, high intensity, Omnimax, sense around overload, no roller coaster can touch. Back to the future at Universal Studios. That's where you start screaming through time. From Universal Pictures, add a bit of ghost and a dab of It's a Wonderful Life, says Sneak Previews, and you have one of the summer's most enjoyable, heartfelt movies. Absolutely wonderful. Robert Downey Jr. and Charles Grodin, Heart and Souls, rated PG-13, may be inappropriate for children under 13. Now playing at theaters everywhere. Summer nights just got better at Six Flags Magic Mountain because every Friday and Saturday during August you can get two admissions for the price of one regular admission after 4 p.m. Bring a date, bring a friend, or come with a group of friends. Experience the thrill of the most incredible heart-pounding rides in the world like Viper, Cyclone, Flashback, Colossus, and Revolution. Top that off with the spectacular Batman Nights Fireworks and Laser Show. At Six Flags, it's a whole different experience at night. As the sun goes down, it's cooler. When the stars are out, it's romantic. When the sky gets dark, the rides loom larger. And best of all, after 4 p.m., the price gets better. Just bring a 3x5 card with K-Rock written on it to a Six Flags ticket window any Friday or Saturday during August, and after 4 p.m., you'll get two admissions for the price of one. If you haven't been to Six Flags Magic Mountain yet this summer, what are you waiting for? With a great deal like this, it's twice as fun as ever. You know, when I'm with her and we're, like, totally concentrating on each other, it's just a real drag to have to stop and think about a condom. Get real. The heat of the moment can burn you for a lifetime. I don't know. I mean, I'm afraid to ask him. If I tell him to use one, he'll think I don't trust him. Get real. 
If you can't ask him, you don't trust him. Oh, man. If someone sees you buying one, or carrying one, or, you know, the whole thing is just too embarrassing. Get real. If you're not ready to deal with condoms, you're not ready for sex. Trojan brand latex condoms help reduce the risk. Get a little closer, don't be shy. Arid Double X, the anti-odor, anti-perspirant, helps keep you extra, extra dry. Get a little closer with Arid Extra, Extra Dry. If you own a Ford, Chevy, GM, Nissan, or Toyota truck, then listen closely to this history-making event. Now through September 18th, four-wheel Park Soul Savers is featuring Rancho suspension products. Rancho, street smart, dirt tough, and in stock now. This is news. It is if you want free installation. Free installation? It won't cost you a cent. For a limited time, just purchase any complete Rancho suspension system and four-wheel Park Soul Savers will install it free. Rancho rises above the competition. If you want a Ford, Chevy, GMC, Nissan, or Toyota truck, you win. Because now, you'll save up to $400 on a complete installed Rancho suspension system. The pros at four-wheel parts soul centers have rolled up their sleeves, and they're putting on Rancho for free. Check out four-wheel parts soul centers now in Gardena, Santa Ana, San Bernardino, Oxnard, Van Nuys, and Burbank. Hurry, free Rancho installation offer ends September 18th at four-wheel parts wholesalers. If you get into fitness, you're likely to get into athlete's foot, and it could get pretty tough. The irritating itch, the painful cracking, the burning. That's when you want a medicine that acts tough. Tough Actin Tenactin. Clinically proven Tenactin cures even the tough cases of athlete's foot fungus. No wonder it's the antifungal most recommended by pharmacists. Got a tough case of athlete's foot? Get the medicine that acts tough. Tough Actin Tenactin. Use only as directed. And we're back here. We're going to start Loveline 106.7 K-Rock. Debbie Harry is here. You were talking to Dr. Drew off the air about a collapsed lung thing or something no, like that. No, I don't want to talk about that. We were talking about uh, uh, euthanasia, really, as we were yeah. talking about. Mm. Serious stuff. Oh, but about Dr. Uh, what was that guy's Dr. name? Dr. Death. Right. <laughs> Which, yeah, call it, that's what they call him now. Yeah. Anyway, Debbie, I can't. We got Debbie Harry. We've got Blondie herself in the studio to give love advice. I want to get to the calls immediately. First, she must sing the Love Line jingle. This will be. You have sang so many great songs over the years. <laughs> this is the only one I've ever written, and this will give you true joy in a very negative sense. <laughs> Here, and we're going to give you a couple examples of other famous artists who've sang the jingle so you know how it goes. First, Carl Wallinger, the singer for World Party. And it goes like this, a one, a two, and a one, two, three, four. Love, line. It's like, love, line. I'll give you one more. We got uh, Roland from Tears for Fears was here last year. You just played Roland. I did? Oh, that, that was, was Roland. Roland. Oh, okay. I was going to think that was a little bit amp for Carl Wallinger from World Party. Here he is. Love line. <laughs> you want another example here, Debbie? How about David Crosby and John Taylor of Duran Duran together? Since <coughs> Duran Duran sounds a like a nice. Okay. Love line. What a weird combo, huh? Okay. Okay. So anyway, let me cue you. A one and a two and a one, two, three, four. La 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 line. Yeah, right. That's it. Awesome. Blondie singing Love Line. Do you mind still being called Blondie, or are you fine with that? I, yeah, I don't mind. I, I've, I actually adore it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll get right to the calls. we got a big Debbie Harry fan on the line right off the bat. This is... Uh, how big? How big? Um, I don't know. Brett, how, how, how big are you? Like, how many inches, dude? Oh, my God. Seven. <laughs> Seven, huh? I'm yeah. A bragger. <laughs> I'm ten. Wow. <laughs> Do you believe that, Debbie? Bragger. Yeah, right. Okay, Brent, you're 18 from La Mirada. Say hi to Debbie Harry. God, Debbie, I love you. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. hi. How are you? You're just uh, like the best. I thank swear, you. I just had to call and talk to you. I love you too, hon. Thank you, God. And you want to know my favorite thing that I've ever seen you in? No. Tell from the dark side the movie. Oh, oh I saw that. Good. You were so cute in that. Uh, <laughs> didn't you cook somebody in the oven or something? I like, tried. And then he you got cooked. And you got, got cooked. I got cooked. Right. right. Did you ever see that, Doctor Drew? No, I never saw that. She was she was the star of Tales of the Dark Side. She ended up being a, a feast. <laughs> yes, I was uh, roasted. <laughs> anyway, is that it, Brent? 
Well, I just got to tell her I love her like a lot. She's so cool. Brett, thanks for just a, a potent first call of the night. Dad, yes. Bye. Bye. That was it, a brain teaser, wasn't it? Right, that was that was really riveting radio. Mm. Hey, listen, let me ask you, you you stopped making music like after around the early I didn't 80s. Stop. But after the early eighties it was like you disappeared for a few years and then reappeared. And I was wondering, was that because of um your your at the time you were either married or your Chris was your boyfriend and he no, got No, it was sick. because of you. And Me? you know it. Now That's now right. you want to talk about it on the air. Right. It was because of our relationship. Uh, our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually we said off the air, the last time I interviewed you, you you thought I was a very annoying man. I did. I know I did. Can I ask you something? Did you think and I you w- still are. Oh, yeah, I was did you say. think that I I almost <laughs> approached being a geek? Well, no. <laughs> You want to be a geek, though, don't you? That's what uh, the Jenna Torturer called me the other night. Who? So, um, this this band that apparently does live enemas on stage. Ah! Right there. They're playing the Ventura Theater tonight. <laughs> they, they like to do penis piercings and other sort of mutilation and on stage. And they think that you're a geek. Right. Well. Because I won't get a penis ring. Oh. You won't? No. Oh. All right. Okay. Next question. All right. Let's go to... Um, Uh-oh. Billy from Burbank. Oh, B- that's what Billy. This is. is this Billy from Burbank? Yeah, it is. Age 16? Yeah. Billy is a guy who calls all the time. He, he masturbates. Are you sure this is the same guy? Is he- this really Billy from Burbank, the guy who masturbates nine times a day? No. That's just oh, okay. A voice. Sorry. But no, this di- is William from Burbank. Okay, go ahead. You should remember me, poor man. Oh, that William. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, well, this is kind of a weird story. But um, I was sitting with my friend today, okay, the girl. And we were just like sitting there and the question came up, you know, am I a virgin? And I said that I was. And then she just started like laughing her like ass off. And she just like wouldn't stop laughing. And I asked her what was so funny. And she just like started laughing. And then she just started telling me all these stories about like, you know, people she's been with. And I'm like, oh, that's very great. And then she just like kept laughing, you know. And So what's, what's the wrong? problem, William? I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with her. You know, I don't know why she would laugh. She was saying, you're 16 and you're a virgin? I'm like, yeah. She just kept laughing. So, like, what can I do, poor man? Maybe it was nervous laughter. Nervous laughter? Yeah. I just ignore it. I mean, do you not want to be a virgin? Of course not. Well, just, you know, just ignore it, I guess. I mean, what's the big deal? Um, well, what I was thinking, poor man, is do you think you can call her and, you know, ask her why, but not tell her, you know, that I'm on the line or something? William, I'd love to, like, enshrine you on the radio, because I know you try to get up on the show about every other week, but, dude, trust me, it's not even worth calling her. Just ignore it. So what if she laughs? Big deal. I know, but dude, it's, like, really sad when they laugh at you because you're a virgin, you know? Yeah, li- li- listen, you should be proud of that. She undoubtedly, I-, I would have to ask her to know for sure, but I'll bet you she feels very uncomfortable with her own activity. And if she, she's basically making her fel- self feel good by m- demeaning you and making you feel bad. She probably has a great deal of doubt about being sexually active herself. And her laughter, in fact, as Deborah said, is probably that of discomfort and an attempt to make you feel bad to make herself feel good. You know in what? fact, she probably believes she should be a virgin, too. I bet you. I be, uh, you should talk to her about it. William, in the overall scheme of things, just, yeah. just blow off the bitch. Okay. But it, listen, it is nothing to do with you. It's Boy, all get her to it, blow you off. Yeah. <laughs> William, it's you'll be happier. All right, now we're talking. William, it's all her stuff. It's nothing to do with you. You should be you're fine. You're sure. uh, Dude, William, you're fine. You're, it's good it's a good thing to be abstinent. Look, you're you're healthy, you're alive. You're 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 not laughing at people needlessly, making them feel bad, okay? Yeah. It, it's that that's all her stuff. Don't okay. it's nothing to do with you. Move on, guy. Okay, point in. Yeah. Kids are cool, Can I talk to you know? off the air? Yeah, that's right. Dude, you know what? Please. Okay. Please. All right. Hold on. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next line. So, Debbie, are you, you are you with anybody now? Are you single, or what? What's your status these days? Oh, God! You. This is. I didn't know I was going to get questioned like <laughs> this. We, we always draw our guests in. My God. Of course, when I asked Joan Jett when she was on whether or not she uh, liked women, she goes, "I don't think I'm here to talk about me." Oh, <laughs> Joan. She's always so politically correct. She is a lesbian, though, isn't she? You should get that from her, not from me. <laughs> okay. I mean, we've only dated a little bit, so <laughs> I really couldn't say. Uh, let's see. Um, am I? Oh, I'm dating. Yes, I'm dating. Now that you, yeah, I, I'm. That's it. I'm on the loose. Mm-hmm. I'm on on um, attached, as they say. Now, now, I would assume that you prefer the male species. 
That's what I'm guessing. Well, yes, I do. In the, in at the end of the day, but I must say that I have a tremendous affection and attraction to women. Really? Or for women, yes. We we had, uh, last time we had Jane Child on. Do you know who she is? The singer? She, uh, mm -hmm. you, do you, are you familiar with her? Mm -mm. Oh, okay, that's all right. Mm -hmm. um, she had one hit single, and now we're trying to get her new record on K-Rock. Uh, Great. Uh, she said that, that she... I have heard her name, but I don't right. know her. She said that, that she was bisexual. And, uh -huh. and the thing is, a lot of women we're finding out have had at least one experience uh -huh. with other women. Well, it's just, it's more like, you know, companionship, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, and to out, out, outright sex. Right. So it's nice, too. Has that happened with you? Never I'm, mind. Oh, okay. See, I was trying to... <laughs> I've already said this. I was on Al Galstein's show. Everybody knows already. That, that you have? Yeah. Okay. So oh. you, you've had both sex, but you prefer men. Yeah. Okay. At the end of the day, yes. Okay. All right, Monique, 14 from Norwalk. Monique. Hi. Hi, say hi to Debbie Harry. Hi, Debbie. Hello, Monique. Hi. You know who she is, right? Yeah. Everybody does. Go ahead. <laughs> You're on Loveline, 106.7 K-Rock. No, who is she? Yeah. Um, I like, because, well, my boyfriend and my brother, they went like, I don't know, they're close, but it's like, I don't know, it's like I caught them kissing, and it was, and I'm like so afraid to kiss my brother again. It's, ugh. I mean, my boyfriend. Because my boyfriend's 16 and my brother's 12. What do you mean? Oh. What do you like, mean and they're... I don't, I don't know. What if kind I of kissing were they doing? They real, were real I kissing. No, I just. Were they like, like just heavy French tongueish? Were they really making out? Yes. Two. Yes. A, a 16 year old. I guess she should just get another boyfriend and maybe I don't know. What I about the brother? What about her brother who's 12? Oh, I know. What about him? Maybe, maybe this. this year. I haven't. They don't know I know yet, though. They didn't see you. No, uh, they did not see me. Well, what uh -huh. were they doing at the time? I don't. Oh, maybe I don't they were know. just practicing. Maybe you know, he <laughs> wanted to know what it was like. And I don't even. The guy was showing him. It was him. so. Oh, it was so gross. I couldn't. Ooh, well, I what's just, your boyfriend like? He's. I don't know. I've been with him for like a year. Yeah. And he's so. I didn't. Oh, I don't know. He just. He's wonderful. I like him. But I can't believe your boyfriend wait, wait, was just no, majorly no, wait a minute, no. macking on your 12-year-old. No, 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 wait a minute. There's, He's 12. Uh, Jim, there's a circumstance where this happens, and I'm trying to find out if that's maybe what's going on here. Well, what, what's a circumstance? What, what's what's your boyfriend like? He's, oh, he's nothing like what I saw, though, because it was like... He's a pretty straight guy. He's a pretty wild guy. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's like in front of the crowd. It's like he's real shy, but in front of me, it's like he's... You know, he's like real. Well, are, yeah. are you guys sexually active together? Yes. Has he been with other people? I don't think so. Would you ever talk about that kind of thing with him? Sometimes, sometimes. And what like, does he say? He, I don't know. He, he told me he hasn't been with other girls, but because we got together when he was fifteen, but. I don't really 15. know. And, and you really just don't talk about it, yeah, basically. I don't have really you had sex with a guy? Huh? Have you had sex That's with a guy? That's what we've been talking about yes. for, man. You have? Yes. you, you got to listen here, guy. Okay, but <laughs> I'm just I'm still focusing on this 12-year-old just right, exchanging on. spit and tongue, you know? Yes. Hold on. This, this, is, this could be a... I mean, this is obviously a very serious problem, and it could be a devastating problem. Uh, yeah. Does, does your boyfriend ever talk about his family situation? Mm, not really. I, I mean, his family situation? Yeah. Is his parents normal? Everything oh. okay at home? Yeah. Yeah, I know his parents are pretty cool. You're not aware of anything funny going on at home? He, I don't, well, when I saw him, I think they were drinking. Well, because when I saw him, there was like a vodka like on the table. Like, so, so there's like the couch, and then there's like a table, and I so saw. There was a what? Vodka. Vodka. So you think oh, somebody. So what? Right, I think they on. were drinking. I'm, so, I oh, was, my God, they have drinks. <laughs> there right, must but, be a sickness oh. in the family. Well, or are you are you saying that you suspect somebody yes, might, might I think be a heavy drinker? But okay. I because they don't know, and I don't know if I should tell mm. them. Because if I break all, up with them, I must have a reason, involved. you know? Yeah, my concern is that something has happened to your boyfriend that has led him to seek out and do things to other younger people that are not good. Mm, and my, that is not an, an uncommon circumstance, and that happens these days, mm -hmm. uh, where, where people 16, 18, 20 molest younger people. Uh, when they've been through trauma themselves when they were younger, this kind of thing tends to happen. So I, I am very concerned for your brother. Yeah. Has your brother had any problems? Has he been okay? Yeah, he never kissed before. No, no, but I mean, he's an okay guy. Yeah, he's, yeah, he just you, you keep you, you, you tell think your, he likes dudes? Huh? You th he, maybe he's gay, your brother. Uh, what I, about? I think... If he's he, never kissed anybody, his first ex kissing experience is with a guy, huh? Yes. 
Well, uh, again, it, it's not so much if, if if these were two consenting young people of the same age, it'd be one thing. But mm -hmm. uh, or experimenting, whatever the case may be. But this is he, your brother's a lot younger than your boyfriend, mm -hmm. and your your boyfriend may be molesting your brother quite literally. And I think mm -hmm. you should distance yourself from your boyfriend. Find out what's going on with your brother and t start talking. Mm -hmm. Find out what's going on here. So how do I like tell them that I know what I? I, I would start with your brother. Talk to him. Ooh. Like, how do I talk to him? I don't Is understand. he there right now? No, he's not. Where is he? He's with my older sister. Where's your older sister? She's in, Mar what's that called? In Moreno Valley. And what city are you in? Norwalk. Do you have their number? No, I don't. You don't have your older sister's number? No, I don't. Because oh, I, I can understand that. I mean, I wouldn't, moved into you know, I, I wouldn't have my brother's number. I mean, you know, we're all in the same family. You know, gee, I, I can't imagine. This even makes me believe this call even more. You don't have your older sister's phone number. She barely moved into Moreno Valley. What are you talking about? Well, maybe your mom has it. Well, I'm, a, well, I'm here alone. You're there alone? Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's nobody you can reach in the family? Mm-mm. I I'm see. So I don't want to tell him, like, oh, oh God. Well, next chance you get, you gotta you know, talk to your little brother. I think this is a bogus call. You do. This is bogus. Because, uh -oh. I mean, because I mean, honestly, Debbie, don't you think she should know how to reach different members of her family, though? I mean, you would think. You never know. You just never know. You don't. <clears throat> All right. Well, we gave you... I, are we done? Yep. Okay. Thanks a lot. It's bogus. There's no doubt. Come on. It, oh, it, I don't know my sister's phone number. And my be. little brother's with my sister. It may be. Bogus. Maybe. Bogosity. It was, it was our new screener. Hey, she's got to be broken in. She is. She's good looking, though. We can break her in in other ways. <laughs> dude, um, dude, that's harassment. <laughs> it is harassment. It is it harassment. Is. Get a memo. That, that is memo harassment. Me, memo me. Memo me. <laughs> Isn't that harassing? Is he always like this? Uh, he's actually rather calm tonight. Because I mean, I had, I did have a problem with you at that at the coach house. When I, why, why? What did, I interviewed you? You interviewed me, and I wanted to kill you. What did I do? I don't know. I just wanted to strangle you afterwards. I remember you're just the kind well, of person I wanted this. to put my hands around are you, your neck you, and squeeze. Is this sort of state dependent learning, and that you're recalling that feeling again coming back now? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Did, so. No, you know what it was? We went on your tour bus. Do you remember? And we were interviewing you on the tour bus. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go. Um, God, there's some just marvelous calls here tonight. Do you want to come blind? Um, I don't know. Okay, Amber, 15 yeah. placenta. Amber? Yeah? Did you hear us spend about 10 minutes of drivel on that last call? What? Did you, did you hear the call before you were on? Yeah. Did you? I can't hear Amber. Amber, we can't hear you. You can't hear me. No. Talk up. Cup your hand to the mouthpiece. Hello? Hello? Yes, there you go. I just asked you if you heard the last call. No, I didn't. You didn't? Mm -hmm. How could you not hear it? I, can't, I wasn't listening. You weren't listening? No. Oh, okay. Well, what's on your mind? She wasn't listening. Let's move on to our next call. Orange County 2. We've got uh, Kathleen, 14 from Orange. Kathleen? Hello? Did you hear that previous call? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Good. We'll handle your problem. <laughs> Screw that chick, Amber. She wants to go out with a 21-year-old guy. Amber, all I have to say is... Don't don't do it. Condom. Yeah, don't do it. Um, Amber's yeah. not the Amber's the one you hung up on. Right. right. She Amber wants to date a twenty one year old. No. Oh. Anyway, Kathleen. Yeah. Was that a bogus call? <laughs> it sounded like it, but I I don't. You can't totally blow off a, a circumstance like that. If the the possibility that it was real, we have to address it. Okay. Yeah. All right. What's your problem? In all honesty, it I'm was not going to get any sleep tonight. It, <laughs> Dude, let's let's put it this way: these kinds of things happen and happen a lot right. in urban America. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. We have to deal with it. So. Kathleen, in all honesty, it was a worthless waste of radio time, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I do. Okay. Because my brother's a DJ too, and I know how that is. Right. Exactly. Anyway, say hi to Deborah Harry, man. This is we, it's an honor to have such a famous musician. Pack and, it in. Uh, pack it in. And you know what? I re and and you know, one time she was in Playboy. Naked. Ooh. I was. Weren't you in Playboy? Like in? Weren't you a playmate at one time or something like that? No. I thought you were. No, you're dreaming. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Went dreaming. Okay. Anyway, Kathleen. Yeah. T tell Debbie your love problem on 106.7 K Rock. Okay. Um. See, there's this guy, and he's 16, and I'm 14, and I met him, and his friend liked me, and then I don't know. After that, we just we started talking on the phone, and I ended up liking him, and. So we started seeing each other, and I thought he was the most perfect guy I could ever meet. It's my dream guy, you know? You know, nice guy, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, 
I don't know. It's just like I felt really trapped with him. Even though I was seeing him, I felt like... Was that a, a function of, of the way he was in the relationship? Was he smothering you? Or was it just the fact that you were in a relationship and maybe didn't want to be at this time? Well, um, that and also because um, it got to a point where it seemed like he really, really loved me. And mm. it just kind of scared me, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is that yeah. the reason you felt uncomfortable in the relationship? Um, right there, that's it? Well, yeah, that and being trapped. Well, well yeah. obviously being too possessive. See, do you, do you, do you, have you gone through that? Have you ever dated guys, Debbie, that have just been just hideously like a blanket all over you? Well, yeah, I have, and it's a very uncomfortable feeling, and it's very, it's very unreal. It doesn't have any basis in a, a true basis in your friendship or your relationship. It just has to do with the other person's needs. Do you understand that, Elizabeth? Is that, is that Kathleen. Her? Kathleen. Yeah. Kathleen. Uh -huh. what, what would you tell Kathleen then, Debbie? Well, I, t I either confront him with it and say that you you don't like that about him, and and but you do like other things about him, and you know just deal with it well, directly. See, see, that's the thing. Last night, I basically told him that I don't want to see him anymore, and ah. <laughs> and see, the thing is, I feel really bad because his friends tell me to call him and talk to him because it'll make him happy. But when I call him, like I called him today, it's like our conversation is like, uh, you know, not no. Happening. The only person you re really responsible to uh is yourself to keep happy yeah. and if you're happy then you can really make other people happy plus if you continue to make contact with him you're just going to drag out his grieving over the loss of the relationship you gotta let him go through it just leave him alone okay. uh, let me ask you something <laughs> is the reason you were scared of this relationship the intensity of his feelings or were you frightened of the own of your own feelings that you were developing well it was like basically both you know his feelings and plus why, I don't why are you afraid of having uh, intimate feelings with a person i don't know see because I guess it's like I don't want I don't I don't want to fall in love right now and I don't want anybody to fall in love with me. How come? I just I just I just want to be a, I'm just not ready for love right now. Hey man, I'm the same way as you are. I I could see how you feel that way. So no, so you know, that's uh -huh. the way it is. Uh -huh. Yeah, but you can't always predict when you're going to fall in love. You know, I mean, love love happens, and yeah. But you know, you, you know, know, it's actually uh, she's actually expressing some good judgment because fourteen yeah. year olds, the love in a, in a fourteen year old is kind of a. Well, I mean, I don't. It's yeah. kind of a, not, not a, a mature kind of a of a. Gee, you're supposed to love with somebody in their twenties or thirties. Look at our divorce rate, boy. That's so much better. No, I'm not, I'm not saying relationships are better. Yeah, now, but, everybody but, falls in but, love and but, lives but, happily ever after in Southern California. It's a, it's a, it's a different, wonderful society. Different, are your parents together, Kathleen? Yeah, they are. Wow. Okay, you're, you're, that shoots that argument. <laughs> it's a different phenomenon in a, a young teenager. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Well, good. Okay. Um, can I just say one more thing? Yeah. Um, um, I was just to ask you guys. Um. See my friend. She, she, her boyfriend is making her jealous, and she, he like does thing. He like he was hitting on me, and he like he kissed my shoulder in front of her to make her jealous. And she doesn't know if he's just doing this for attention or get rid of him. Get rid of him. It's not, not worth trying to figure out why he's doing it. He's doing it. Tear yeah. his lips off. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just not appropriate. It's just totally ridiculous. She should have to put up with that. Okay. Do you, okay. Boy man, do you agree? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, thanks. Okay, bye bye. Okay, bye. Okay, let's go to LA one, where we got Paul, twenty five from Hollywood. Paul, yes. Apparently, a little little uh, workplace romance, huh? Yeah. Mm. And listen, say hi to Debbie Harry, our guest tonight on Loveline. Hey, Debbie, how you doing? I'm very well. How are uh, you? Great. This is like a great honor to speak to you. Your work. Do you, know, you. you know what? I'll Thank tell you, you something. There's ve there's very few musical performers that I actually like feel slightly just in awe of, and this is one of them. I will not, no matter what happens tonight, I would never, ever, even though you can't stand me, Debbie, but I honestly... <laughs> I don't, it's not that I can't stand you, it's just that I can't believe you. It's just that she wants to kill you. Do you know, I gotta tell you something. <laughs> I said I want to wring your neck. I want to tell the listeners, I'm so tempted, I mean, I ate flaming hot Cheetos on the way to work today, I have Ooh. to fart so bad. <laughs> oh! And, and usually I would stick the mic up to my butt, but because Debbie's here, really? I won't do it. Oh, gee, I don't know why all these people are hanging around in this room, if you do that. <laughs> I don't care about that. All right, everyone, let's get out. <laughs> Leave it, him here. It really is a mark of distinction when that is what uh, distinguishes you from the crowd. Is that the <laughs> yes, poor man it? will not fart, will in, not front fart in front of me. Yeah. I really have to, though. Well, no, I often have that feeling when I'm really interested in someone and, you know, I really, you know. Then you, you won't fart. I hold back, right, yeah. <laughs> but let, let's be honest. We, we discussed this last night. God, why does this hotline keep ringing? Hold on a sec, okay, Paul? Okay. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Scott? 
Yeah, who's this? Heidi. Heidi. Oh, hey. It's well, what happened to the 25-year-old guy with the He's on. This is our, here. our screener. Are we having a three-way? Our, oh. our screener from last night. Heidi, you lost the phone numbers of the 14-year-old and the 22-year-old, didn't you? <sighs> No, uh. I went over to get some CDs and they were gone. I think it's a conspiracy. Hey, Heidi, you. I forgive you for that. I just wish every screener we had was as good as you. We have a new female screener. Looks great. Calls not no, that. this is a good call. Oh, this is good. Okay. Come on. Yeah. Oh. All right. Anyway. I'm sorry. Don't Give do it. Girl don't do it break. again, darling. I'll never do it again. But someone must have thrown it away because they were right there. Hey, are you listening to our show tonight? I am. You are? Mm-hmm. And how's Debbie doing so far? She's doing great. Can she get a word in edgewise between me and Drew? Not really. See, that's the thing. <laughs> that, that's that's the thing, huh? Oh. He's doing it on purpose. I know. Just I start know. talking. Yeah. Right. Take him over. Just, All right. just jump in there. I have to answer a What's page. up with so the connecting commercial? So if I would have lost... What? This, guy is, this I, guy is on the call here, you know? Yeah. What, what was that? It's got I real said, what's business. What's the connecting commercial? The connecting commercial? Yeah, who got that account? Not me. Like Loveline listeners have a jockey or something. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, it's like when, when, it's like since you're an intern, you'll learn very quickly that uh, the commercials kind of like pay your salaries, so you don't want to uh, be honest about them. It's there. It's a great commercial. Okay. Anyway, goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Okay. We'll see you next Tuesday. Okay. Hey, Paul. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, my, Paul, you, uh, you found some workplace romance. You had sex with another woman. No, another man. Oh, how old? He's twenty-two. Yeah. Did you and did you cork the fine wine? <laughs> oh. uh, Don't be so embarrassing. You're so kind rude. Of, yes. God. Yes. Okay, go ahead. But um, I was his uh, first male experience. He's been straight his whole life, till a fat guy, and uh, we had like something going for like one or two weeks. And afterwards, he, like, um... Where did you guys end up doing the boinkage? At, at work? So, well, what would you, you ended up what? Come on. Look, well, actually, <laughs> the first time was at the Beverly Connection bathroom. Isn't that, a, like, a health club? No, it's, it's, uh... Beverly Connection is, uh... It's a... It's like a mall across from Beverly Center. Oh, right, yeah. And you did it in, in a... We didn't do it. We just kind of, like, had a oral sex. Ah. In a stall at the Beverly... It, it was kind of like a little bit. It was, it was just like a... Oh, God. I'm getting all freaked out now. Were you in a stall? Yeah. So what's the problem? The problem is that this happened like a month ago. It had for two weeks going on straight. It happened a month ago, and it's like now he like freaked out afterwards. He's been really cold. Every time we work with each other, he argues. He gets rude with me. He talks me down to people. And I'm feeling really like I can... I mean, he's like totally ex really homophobe now he's like I, I'm like really straight now like either he hates me or, or what it is but I really like can't stand going to work and I feel like I have to I like I don't know if I should look for another job or what it is but it's really it's really hard to work there with him huh but, wow um, I, I mean, do, you suggest, do you think I should just look for another job or I mean was I wrong for doing something with him or because that was kind of his first experience and I don't know if I caused all this problem with him well, he uh, went. It's fifty-fifty. You know, it's yeah. I mean, he 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 did participate in. Yeah, that. I mean, I, really, he can't face up his you know face up to his things. Right? Yeah. But but you know what? I I'm, I've been in a situation at work where I like got heavily involved with one with one of my interns. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, and it was, and, and she was like, like my intern on my morning show. Yeah, and then she dumped me a month into the morning show, and I couldn't tell anybody here at work because it was so scandalous because. You know, she was ashamed of making it public, and so uh, it was it was hideous going to work. Okay. I mean, I, I know exactly where this guy rela is. Re you know, I know. Yeah, I, I, so I, what I, should I you do? Should you tell this guy to like, act like a you know act like a a real person and not be such I'm a shithead? Is because like last week, I, I mean, I'm trying to take him to photography, and I took some pictures of him, and uh, we started uh, kissing when I was taking pictures of him. It, it just like it threw me because he was so adamant. I mean. I try. I'm, I try my best to make be friends with him, but I'm like, I felt like I did something really wrong to him. Because is he of, is he a good kisser? Uh, he's okay, I guess. I mean, is he uh, is he endowed? Well, unless you seduced him and you know tied him up and everything like that, no, I think I mean, you should like give up your I mean, guilt. I, I, but I feel like because he was he was straight until that time, and I'm wondering if I, if ha! I can convert. Well, how do you know that? He just says that. You have no proof of that. That's true, I guess. But he's always kind of been a. So, so what should he do? I mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, he's getting me confused because he's doing stuff still, but then he pulls back really far. Like he takes a step, takes ten feet step, ten foot steps back. 
And, um, and I mean, so I just look for another job and just not have to work with it because it's really very difficult. How much do you make an hour? Minimum wage, but I work what? off tips, so I'm a waiter. You're a waiter? Mm -hmm. What restaurant? God, I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should say, man. You'll get some business. People are love lobsters. will check it out. Uh, what, what type of food does it serve? It serves a uh, continent. It's in Beverly Hills. Do you have hot dogs on the menu? No, we don't have hot dogs. But we do have... Uh, sausages! <laughs> <laughs> All veal sausages. Do you really veal sausages? Mm -hmm. do you well, that's just one special. Do you have mur burgers, meat between two buns? <laughs> Tacos, yeah. Tacos. <laughs> I hope the doctor comes back fast because, you know, this show is going to sink right down. Now. This is what Dr. Bing. Dr. Drew has left the room so we can talk about <laughs> anal beer. Oh, level. <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, I'm just thinking of myself going into that restaurant and you guys are doing the sloppy one in the next room. <laughs> Don't go to the bathroom stalls, okay? Oh, yeah, right in the bathroom, and then, can you serve me my quiche? He doesn't sound like such a great guy to me. I think you should find another guy and ignore him. I, I, I mean, yeah, I, maybe, do you think I should look for another job so I don't have to work with him anymore? No, I think you should ignore this guy. And if you, yeah, if you can't work with him, if the job is replaceable, I mean, with me, when I did the morning show on K-Rock, I eventually was replaced. So that's how I moved on. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... You know, I mean, if you could find another a quiche factory, you know, is it where where are you located? What where's the restaurant? What, <laughs> what city? It's in Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills. Hang up, my friend. God, I wonder if I've eaten there. We we ought to take this off the air because you're going to lose your job anyway. I lose my job. Let's let's put on a little musical interlude. We'll take you off the air. I just have to know the restaurant. We won't do it on the air, okay? Okay. People who have eaten there. Okay. Did you guys eat in there? Yeah. Does that freak you out now? <laughs> <laughs> Is this? Come on up here. Is this a pretty popular restaurant or what? It's big in industry. What? It's a yeah. big industry uh, you, you, restaurant. You're a publicist, right? Yeah, it's with the industry crowd. It's really. Popular. So now, now you know that this this guy has been serving and sausages and playing with them in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys done it at the restaurant? No, we've, we've done it in the elevator. In the elevator at the restaurant? Ooh, yeah, that sounds nice. That's God. nice. We're not, we're not like done it. We didn't do it. We just kind of kissed in the elevator. You so, fooled around. So listen. What did I walk back into here? We, we, Never just found mind. Out, we just found out that he serves veal sausages yeah, while he's playing I, I, with I, the I, other guy's <laughs> sausage. <laughs> Poor man, thank you for your sensitivity. How can we help this guy? We already have helped him. We're, we we're done. Him. He we're should done. ignore okay. this Yeah, you guys give him a good answer. Just not deal with him. Yeah, just ignore on. this just bozo. Ignore yeah. him. Okay. Is, but he they, be, is he being harassed sexually? Did, no, no. They, no, no. They're, they're, <laughs> what I mean, a mind you have. Don't, No, Drew, it's fine. Go go back to your page. We're having fun now. We're loosening up. We're all right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, I want to say the name of this place so bad. Just, uh, oh, don't you dare. Listen, I, I promise I wouldn't, but you certainly could. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's in shock back here. He's just thinking, oh, my God, I ordered a veal sausage served to us by our favorite waiter who was playing with it the other man's sausage two minutes earlier. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Would you like it fricassee? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Orange County. You know, I swear for some reason, Dr. Drew, and this may, may be me and my, my whole fetish about the fear of, you know, just all sorts of diseases. Uh -huh. But, I mean, just think of people. I mean, there there restaurants always have all this sleaze going on in the background. I bet if we put a... So do, gro so do grocery stores, we found out over the years. That's right. We found out some guy at Ralph's who was the, 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 the produce manager had big warts. What's your point? In, um, my point is, is it unhygienic? Like if they are like fully just boinking in the back room, and then they serve you your three egg wow. omelet. <laughs> <laughs> at, at the very least, there it's not as though restaurants are nidises for for infectious diseases, and as though there are outbreaks of you know constantly. There are certain things that do happen in restaurants. There are certain outbreaks of certain kinds of food poisonings and things that occasionally occur. And it results are like from things like people wiping their nose and then serving their food, or you know there, there are various ways that people can contaminate food. But what you're concerned with? Uh, can you get AIDS is, from the omelet? No. Okay. And what you're concerned with typically does not happen. Good yeah. God, you're going to start trouble. You are a troublemaker. Oh yeah. You are. 
Please, <laughs> we, would you strangle him by the end of the show? It'd be, it'd be quite a community service. Would you service. like me yeah, to? Yeah, I think that'd be terrific. <laughs> okay, Deborah, would you help me? <laughs> Deborah Harry is here. Blondie is in the studio, and she's consented to be on Loveline for two hours <laughs> for once and probably the last time ever. But uh, well, let's go to Orange County, too. And this is Sarah, 17, from Laguna Hills. Sarah? Hi. Hi. You a big fan of Debbie Harry? Oh, definitely. Well, say hi. Hi, hi. Debbie. How are you doing? Thanks. Hi. Hi. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. Hey, Sarah? Yeah. Hi. 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 What can hi. we do for you? Hi, Spit everyone. it out. <laughs> okay. What's, what's your love problem here? Well, I don't know where to start. My life is, like, perfect for the show. Um, let's see. Well, this summer and the end of my junior year, um, I've been getting a lot of hate crimes from people at my school because um, I'm a lesbian at my school and I'm out. And um, I just came out this year, in fact, and um, for the first three years of my high school career, I just kind of stayed in the closet because I was afraid that this was going to happen. But um, now it's my senior year, and my family and myself and, um, and everyone seems to be getting a lot of hate crimes here at my house, and I'm just wondering if you guys have any advice for what I could do for these ignorant people at my school and to keep my family away from, you know, such things. Debbie, what do you think? Well, I don't know. That's difficult. I can't. I can't. It's hard to believe that you're the only lesbian in the whole. Oh, school. I'm definitely not. Actually, like nine or ten people have come out to me since. Um, do, you, do you go to Laguna Hills High School? Yeah, I do. I used to date the uh, a girl who was the former uh, uh, prom queen. Are you serious? What's her name? Uh, yeah, this was years ago. Oh. It wasn't like this year's <laughs> queen. Yeah. He, can't he can't remember. Well, hopefully I'll make it next year. We'll see. We'll have the first gay uh, prom queen, right? <laughs> right. That'd be awesome. <laughs> then you can be up there arm in arm with your girlfriend. Oh, with, totally. Yeah, that's, with the principal. That's my goal. <laughs> yeah, too bad the principal's a man. <laughs> mm. Or else you'd hit on her. Yeah, uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> okay, anyway, Debbie, what, I'm, I'm sorry I interrupted you. I don't know, you know. I, I really don't know what to say, whether I would just... Uh, I guess if you, your friends are your friends and there's always going to be some some people that are insecure about, you know, their own uh, their own sexuality. So yeah, they, they, have to, they have to lash out at other people. So yeah. What about what about organizing some kind of a support group for, for a gay? I asked to do that. Actually, I wanted to start a, um, like a club. And, and they said, well, this is a conservative county and da, da, da. And well, who said that? My um my vice principal or my my dean of I discipline. think I think that's discriminatory. I think it is too, and and they started bringing up some real. I was on um I was ASB vice president last year, mm. and she started saying things like, "Well, what what do, what will we say when parents you know call and say, well, you we have a gay person on our ASB.' I'm like, well, what do you do when they call and say we have a black person on our ASB? It's like the same thing, you know." And so, um, you know what you should do. I, I, yeah, I, this sounds like real legal stuff. I think. I, it does I, too. I think. I think. Now we, we're really. I think we may be stepping over some boundaries here, but I, I feel compelled to, to say this. You should get an attorney. Yeah. You should talk to your local press about this. Totally. Well, I've had I've had press people come, but then I thought that's and just like another thing to get more hate crimes coming. But, but well, you're right. That's a good point. But. Uh, Try to try to do this in such a way that you do what's right without inciting a lot of chaos. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Try try to just try to do that, but I seem to be like try the center to, of controversy well, everywhere. Well, then then try to play um, play as low a profile as you can, but g gather community support where you can. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you need an attorney. I think you ought to. I think you ought to be talking to local police authorities too about what's happening to you in terms of these crimes against you yeah but you 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 want to de-escalate <coughs> this thing if you can yeah but but do it in such a way that you at least have some support behind you yeah that's true it's hard because like my parents i'm talking about like moving out now because what, what are they doing to you who my are the people yeah well i've had um dyke written all over my house in like whipped cream and i've had all, all times of, of the night like five in the morning saying or daughters of dark da, 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 you know just like just planner. Nobody's actually hurt anyone. I had some skinheads chase my gay best um, around my neighborhood. And you had skin, skinheads were chasing you down the neighborhood not, street. Not me. They were chasing my gay best friend. And he, um, he skin came running. Skinheads? Yeah, skinheads were. There's skinheads in my neighborhood, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so um, that was, I mean, just, just things like that. Nobody's actually hurt anyone, but I'm afraid it's going to come to that. And uh, it's just can, can you have a meeting in some way with, with a third party? With these people that are that are aggressing against you, I wish I don't. I don't know who. I mean, nobody at my school seems to want to take the initiative, and then my parents definitely don't. And these people, I don't want to like deal with them by myself. I mean, I've <laughs> I've, I've gone up to them and started. They won't see the thing is they like they can do it when they're with a big group of people, but as right. soon as they're by themselves, and I start saying, "Well, excuse me," you know, and then they just totally turn and walk away. And we have this 
this like Mormon clan starting too that that's like starting this like homophobic thing oh my at my God. school and. I know it's getting like totally overwhelming. And well, but the, I mean, they they have a right to uh, express themselves too. Yeah, totally. But, but that's true. so long as they don't harm you. Yeah, I mean, religion's always going to be a basis of this whole like problem. But so I, I mean, I never say anything, and and we've written articles, me and my friends that are gay, and and we've tried to be um, all encompassing and stuff with with writing like nice articles, and then we've gotten like bashing articles back. Are, are you stuff. are you going to college soon? Um, well, after next year, yes. I think you maybe. should hang in there, or or maybe what you I should do. I, I'm, I'm kind of rethinking what I what I said earlier. Maybe you uh -huh. want to take a. I mean, this is this is a shame that you have to do this, but uh -huh. it's not right. But for the time being, for the sake of your family and ev and everybody, uh -huh. take a real low profile. You think? Go to college, get support, come back sometime and try to establish in your own community <laughs> what what's proper, what's right for for people. The, yeah. You know, in such a way. Now, I think you may bring. Enough harm upon yourself that it just won't be worth it. I mean, you need yeah. to get out and go to college and get on with your life. That you will find, I'm sure, there'll be a lot of support for you once you get out in the real world. Yeah, and I mean, I, that's why I, my parents never understand why I like to go up to Los Angeles, but it just seems so much more. Just you know what? Just accepting. just hang in there. Yeah. yeah, just hang in there because I bet you, you know, as many people, you know, the skinheads are against you. There's people that can't stand the skinheads that's too. True. I mean, you know. Yeah, not only that, but you're really fortunate that your parents are sticking with you. Well, they kind of aren't. That's the problem. Oh. That's like one of the main issues. But, but I mean, uh -huh. you know what? If you really believe in what you believe in, you got to be strong, you know? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I think I have been. It's just, just kind of overwhelming. Don't just hang in there. Hang yeah. in there. You're not the only lesbian on the earth. I mean, Debbie, no, totally Deb, Debbie, said, Debbie said at the beginning of the show, she's she's gone both ways. And I, I know. Mean, hey, Deb, can I get your number? No, <laughs> Well, tr try try to sort of de-escalate things and not yeah. not have so much chaos in your life. Yeah, it's get it sounds like it's getting dangerous. Right. Yeah, that's that's the scary thing. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, bye, bye guys. Okay, we got some faxes here. Our fax number eight one eight or two one three five two zero one F A X for Debbie Harry. It says Debbie, was that you in the movie Videodrome? That was me. If so, you've got great. Teats. <laughs> and it's signed, Love Big Dave. Hi, Big Dave. <laughs> Poor man, what's up? Blondie, don't leave your dog down by Dalt's restaurant on the first floor of the K-Rite building. I know, they'll make it into a sandwich. They <laughs> got a hold of my cat and made a taquito out of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have the same problem in New York. There's this Egyptian guy. I know he's he, he drools every time he sees my dog. <laughs> Poor man, if I could get... This is from Lorimar Television from Slinky, who faxed us last night. And I said, why don't you get us a TV deal for Loveline? He goes, poor man, if I could get you a TV deal, I wouldn't be working this late faxing Loveline. <laughs> Take care, bud. But maybe he just wants to have sex with my dog. Okay. Sorry. I yeah. just thought of that. Yeah, that. That could be, too. That in could the, be in it. The, in the kitchen of the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. And then they could serve the taquitos that are made out of cat. Okay. Poor man, why are you so concerned with what Jen from the Jenna Torturers thinks of you? If you know you're not a geek, drop it. I can tell she really wounded your ego, but move on. Don't beat this thing to death. You are not a geek. You're our hero, and that's all that matters. Dr. This Rose. is a good fax. Oh, this yeah. Is from, right. This is from Jamie and Sherry in Riverside. Uh, you probably wrote it yourself. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry, poor man. You're not a geek. We wouldn't let anyone stick needles through our dicks. <laughs> okay. Let's see. What else do we have here? Anything redeeming? Um, poor man, you are cool. Let's hear you boink the guest live. Does she agree? Wait, I want to show you my dick. <laughs> Here it I, is. I would be... So <laughs> That's funny. There's a little thumb in her special area. Um, let's see here. I guess that's about it. Anyway, keep faxing us, folks. And uh, we're going to take a break here. We only have one song, right, from you? That that one we played? Well... well this is... this is No, the Helena was here, and, and she had to go back. She brought the whole thing for you. The whole deal. Mm. The whole big... You know, the whole big pet cash. Oh, there she is. Do you have it, Helena? Do you have the oh, new record? Oh, she's back. Okay. I'll tell you what. Let's take care of some business. Oh, first, one one more fan. We got a big fan of Debbie Harry's online. Alex17 from Newport Beach. Go hey. ahead. Go ahead. Say hi to Debbie Harry. Hey, man. I oh, love her yeah. so much. I'm such a huge fan of her. Oh, great. Thanks. How yeah. big are you? About 20 inches long. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Hey, poor man. Yay. Uh, about uh, your thing yesterday about, like, being a dick on the air. Hey, I like it, man. What? Like, you going off overboard, asking all these crazy questions and stuff. I really dig on it. You think that's good when I'm just annoying as hell? Hell yeah, man. It makes me even better. I just like this. So you think what I do you do? Do you laugh at him, or do you oh, just sit there yeah. and grin and 
You oh, roll around I'm on the floor, like, hold your sides. What what goes? You know. Well, uh, first of all, I'm always stoned, so it makes it more better than that. <laughs> <laughs> makes it more better. Oh hell yeah! Much all my friends better. that listen to you, poor men, are just like puffing on bongs at that time. Have you, have you called before? Yeah, I've called before. Yeah, like I, rec I recognize your voice. <laughs> so, yeah, so you yeah. think you think I shouldn't hold the fart back? You think I should have just put the mic oh, up man, in my butt? Oh man, please let a big ass fart just for me, man. I hope you. You know do. who this guy is? You know who this guy is? No. This is the guy that called and then claimed to be his brother. Remember that? Yeah. What was his name? Remember that? Claimed yeah. to be my brother. No, no, claimed to be his own brother in, in a later call. This is that guy. Do you know what? I don't care. I like this guy. Yeah, let's well, put this, him on no, hold. No, he's off. He's let's, gone. Let's he's gone. Him. Okay. All right. Well, let's take he care of him. put him on business. hold. I know, I want to talk to him off the air. I like him. <laughs> Somehow that doesn't surprise me. You okay. Would. Anyway, Debbie Harry Yeah, Blond they can fart at each other. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie Harry Blood is in the studio. It's Love Line. We'll be back with more next on K Rock. And now, another K Rock concert. They're back. Wango, Wango. It's a dead man's party. Friday, October 29th at Irvine Meadows Amphitheater. The Budweiser Concert Series presents the return of the Halloween band with Boingo Boingo. The party that turns Los Angeles upside down is back. The Halloween bash with Boingo Boingo. Budweiser brings you the party to end all parties. Friday, October 29th at Irvine Meadows Amphitheater. Tickets for the bash on sale this Saturday morning at 9. At Ticketmaster, including music, Cross Robinson's May and Tower are charged by Bob. Boingo, Boingo. Brought to you by Budweiser. Proud to be your bud. Produced by Avalon. When you see Jurassic Park, you see all the wonder. Can I touch it? Sure. All the adventure. Excellent. All the action. Of the biggest motion picture of the decade. Look out! But this year... And freeze! You won't see it on video. Oh, no. At theaters everywhere, Jurassic Park. Rated PG-13. May be inappropriate for children under 13. Now playing. On the dark side of Dixie, hunting season has just opened. All you have to do is point and shoot. And the prey... Don't have a prayer. But Jean-Claude Van Damme is one target. We are stalking an exceptional opponent. That's playing hard to get. How's it feel to be hunted? You tell me! Jean-Claude Van Damme is the hard target. Rated R. Under 17, not admitted without parent. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere. Summer nights just got better at Six Flags Magic Mountain because every Friday and Saturday during August you can get two admissions for the price of one regular admission after 4 p.m. Bring a date, bring a friend, or come with a group of friends. Experience the thrill of the most incredible heart-pounding rides in the world like Viper, Cyclone, Flashback, Colossus, and Revolution. Top that off with the spectacular Batman Nights Fireworks and Laser Show. At Six Flags, it's a whole different experience at night. As the sun goes down, it's cooler. When the stars are out, it's romantic. When the sky gets dark, the rides loom larger. And best of all, after 4 p.m., the price gets better. Just bring a 3x5 card with K-Rock written on it to a Six Flags ticket window any Friday or Saturday during August, and after 4 p.m., you'll get two admissions for the price of one. If you haven't been to Six Flags Magic Mountain yet this summer, what are you waiting for? With a great deal like this, it's twice as fun as ever. This Sunday, the Coors Light 8th Annual California Volkswagen Jamboree is back for a reggae party summer blowout. One day only, the Orange County Fairgrounds in Costa Mesa will be filled with hundreds of custom and vintage Volkswagens. All kinds, types like bugs, skias, buses, water pumpers, sand rails, type threes, oval and split windows, and much more. All competing for cash and prizes. VW and Trans Magazine and McGuire's Automotive Care Products present this huge custom and vintage Volkswagen car show, plus a giant indoor swap meet. Sellers, manufacturers, and dealers will be offering thousands of parts and accessories at rock bottom swap meet prices, even complete cars for sale. Bring money! This full day of excitement will feature Southern California's hottest babes in an outrageous bikini contest. Band Jam, Bungie Run, and Sumo Wrestling Demonstration from LA Party Works. Southern California Imports Engine Blow! Pancake Breakfast and on stage will be rock and roll music from The Shout and reggae music from Hoi Polloi. Brought to you in part by Pick Your Part Auto Wrecking, Al Martinez Body and Paint, and Bosch Lights and Bosch Platinum Plug. Don't miss the Coors Light Volkswagen Show of the Year and Reggae Party Summer Blowout this Sunday from 9 to 5 at the Orange County Fairgrounds in Costa Mesa. Tickets at the Gate and Inner Shows Productions. 
Hi, this is Art Old Boy Alberto. And have I got the hottest summer deal ever, and I don't mean maybe. In celebrating the Old Boy Alberto 75th anniversary, how'd you like to get free admission to Raging Waters at San Dimas for the Old Boy Alberto Splash Bash Party? Just bring two empty bags, many Old Boy Alberto beef jerky or smoked sausage sticks, 15, 16 ounce or larger, and get in free to Raging Waters on August the 20th. It'll be an evening of fun, Old Boy Alberto style. That's right. Try the flavor of Old Boy Alberto beef jerky and smoked sausage sticks then bring two labels per person and have an evening of fun in the sun at Raging Waters. Two labels per person, and there's no limit to how many people can come. Pick up your favorite flavor of Old Boy Alberto beef jerky and smoked sausage sticks. Remember, August 20th from 5 to 11 p.m. for free admission to our great Splash Bash party. Compliments of Old Boy Alberto. See ya. The first 106 people after 8 a.m. at Raging Waters this Friday get in free. Get Alberto beef jerky at all area Texaco stores. Are you over the age of 18? Do you feel sad or hopeless? Are you having difficulty sleeping? If the answer is yes, call California Clinical Trials at 310-854-3900. That's 310-854-3900. You may be suffering from depression and could earn up to $440. California Clinical Trials is currently conducting a research study on depression. Call 310-854-3900. Qualified participants receive a free basic physical exam, lab test, and may receive up to $440. Call California Clinical Trials at 310-854-3900. If you or someone you know feels sad, hopeless, or lack motivation, you may qualify to participate in a research study on depression and could earn up to $440. Call California Clinical Trials at 310-854-3900. If you're over the age of 18, call now during Loveline. Operators are standing by to take your call. That's 310-854-3900. And Love Lines back. Deborah, we're going to play one of your songs. Good. What song are we hearing? Dog Star Girl. And any story behind this? or? Yeah, this is a song that was written by uh, Chris Stein and William Gibson, the um, cyber, sci-fi author. Huh. Okay, we're going to hear it. This is, and this is a new song on your new, your new album? Is yeah, right? yeah. This is a whole, I have a whole bunch of new stuff. Okay. And Something to, for everyone. And we'll continue screening. Be back with Loveline. The number is 818-213-310-520-1067. If you're calling from San Fernando Valley, 764-1067. Orange County, 977-1067. Fax line is 5201-FAX. Deborah Harry.
with the impending birthday. I'm getting really insecure, Debbie, because... I'm sick of hearing about that damn chicken. What chicken? Stick that chicken, you know where. The chicken that prevented her dog from coming up here. Do you know what? Debbie is in a... She's, she's in an ornery mood tonight. She almost didn't even come into the studio because... Our guests are not allowed to bring pets into the building. I mean, this is K-Rock. I mean, some that of the people... That wasn't my pet. Are, that was my best friend. It was your dog. And where where did you honestly leave your... How did... What did you do with the dog? I gave it to the restaurant downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Taquitos. Taquitos. They'll be up here very shortly. Hot and steamy. Um, Welcome back. I missed you so much when you were in the other room. Doing a commercial yeah. for the Florentine yeah. Garden. Yeah, I got really scared without you. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I did. You know, I get it. You know, remember we were talking to that 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 gay dude who scammed on his fellow worker at the restaurant in Beverly Hills. Yeah, yeah. Courtney, who who works with with my publicist Steve Levesque and Dave Crowley over at Lee Salters. Courtney, you got to tell Debbie you've eaten at that restaurant, right? Yeah, I, I used to eat there all the time with my girlfriend. And you and, heard and you heard the story and tell the tell. What and uh, we used to order the roasted chicken all the time, and I noticed that I always had diarrhea after that, and I <laughs> I just kind of wondered why. Uh, uh, yes. Oh, you could have an allergy. <laughs> we got a few faxes here. Poor man, sh stop showing off in front of Debbie. You sound like a geek. Sarah from Burbank. Hey Drew, you're acting unusually cool tonight. Debbie, you are awesome. Nice do in hairspray. Oh, thanks. That's right. You did. You were the, one of the stars of hairspray. You and uh, a bunch of really bizarre people, right? I beg your pardon. Uh, no, a bunch of interesting people. Thank I mean. you. Okay. Okay. Dear Dr. Drew and Poor Man, I found your screener very rude. Oh, you mean that time of the month, Scott? When I told him my problem, he said to get a life, go see a real doctor, and go to hell. What? Wow. If Scott said that. That sounds like really good advice. Yeah. The call was not a prank, and I really have a problem. This show was meant to solve problems. Why would the screener tell you what to do? Sincerely, a 13-year-old. Let's call that one back. Scre screener is very rude. Read letter. It doesn't leave a phone number, but... Fa have them fax, fax the number for us. Fax we'll call the phone back. number, and if it turns out that's the case, I, I want him off the show Well, wait, no, wait, wait, wait. Give Scott the benefit of the right, doubt. Let's, right. assume that's okay. a, let's assume that's a, you know, erroneous. Okay, let's let's see what else we got here. Oh, you have so much fun with that. You the faxes? Yeah. Poor man, how old is the beautiful no the beautiful wait, 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 wait. intern? Ask her to call me. Dave Baker, 16. Sorry, <laughs> Dave. Um, this one. Yeah, this one. Somebody said you told him to go to a doctor and to go to hell. I did not tell anybody to go to hell, but I know who this guy is already. Okay. Debbie, my English comp professor at Youngstown State University, 1981, Ohio, claims to have gone to school with your husband. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. It's all true. Uh -huh. Do you know, i got to tell you I'm something. I'm not married, hon. <laughs> well, maybe it was Chris. Did he ever... Chris? Weren't you and Chris married at one time? No. He calls up mm -hmm. twice. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to tell you is Rock and Fig, our surf reporter, partied with you back in like 1979 when you played the... Uh, I can't remember a thing. It wasn't me. <laughs> no, he, it was you. <laughs> Appear, and, and and it was uh, when you played the uh, Golden Bear in Huntington Beach, and he's he's our surf reporter on K Rock. Oh he, yeah, and he okay. said that you guys took a herbal break. Oh God, I not me. <laughs> anyway, I just want to throw that out. We got to we got to go back to the calls here. Did you give the top of the RID, Drew? Uh, no. K Rock QFM Pasadena, Los Angeles. Debbie Harry singing the Love Line jingle. Do you remember what it was like, or should I refresh your memory? Here? Do I have to repeat it? Every can time I do another one. Every time we have a segment. Here, here it is again. That's not me. That was no, I know, but that was uh, Michelle Burke, who's what, who's the Conehead daughter. Oh, that, that was her doing it. That's nice. You think this is something you want to talk about? Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay. Anyway, a one and a two and a one, two, three, four. Love line. Yeah, let's hear it for Debbie. A round of applause. These two have been waiting quite a while. Let's do these two. Okay, let's go to a penis rings call right now. Okay. Oh, what's what? Why? Wait a minute. Our high tech phones are screwing up. Hello. Now. Hello. Hi. Hello. This is this um, Elizabeth. Elizabeth eighteen from Riverside. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay, you're on Love Line with uh, Debbie Harry. Hey. Hi. How are you doing? Good. What's up? Well, I'm sick of people calling poor man a geek, but I got to tell you, one of my friends showed me his penis ring, and my, I got to tell you, it turned me on. My penis ring? No, my friend. Oh, you mean your buddy? You yeah. You mean a guy had a penis ring? Yeah, and he showed it to me. 
See, mm. Je Jen of the De Jenna Torturer says, I, you know, I thought she was gnarly and scary because she wanted to install a penis ring in me, and because <coughs> I wouldn't do it, and because of the way we look, she thought Drew and I were geeks, and Drew doesn't mind being called a geek. <coughs> you're fine. I I'm, I'm more than fine. <laughs> I appreciate but you're, it. you're a doctor. You so long do as I call him Mr. Geek or Dr. Geek, it's okay. <laughs> but anyway, so um, you have a friend who's got one? Yeah. And, and do you want to do you want to have sex with him? Um, well, I yeah, mean, you kind want, of. <laughs> you want to experience what it's like to have sex with a guy with a ring in his in his sausage. You're 15. Oh yeah. You're 15? Yeah. Are you a virgin? Uh, my eyes aren't. No. What? Her <laughs> eyes aren't. Her but I mean it intrigues aren't. you though, right? Yeah, it totally turned me on. What, what, Debbie, have you ever met a gentleman with a ring? Yes, you I have. have. And what, what, do you, what do you feel about that? Um, well, I don't know. I, I just, I didn't do it with him. Why? Because he had the ring in there? No. No, it just didn't get to that. But I, I don't know. I just don't know. I think I don't know. It's you know everybody's everybody's different, but I think that you have to be a little you know more more of an adult. I I don't know how adult you are at fifteen or you know or actually to see whether, it or to have sex. Oh, to have sex or to make that kind of decision. Oh you know, no, to have that no, kind no, of experience. No, no. I don't know. It's completely different than just seeing it. No, of course you can look. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, isn't that awful? But you thought it was a turn on. Oh, I don't yeah. know, man. It was great. <clears throat> okay. Thanks. Well, hey, can I say something else? Sure. Um, I was at the whiskey a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you that group Skeletons, oh, you got to get them on. You know what? You were at the Poor Fest. Yeah. The Skeletons rocked. I they mean, were sweet. They they were just fantastic. Oh, I got, yeah. I got to agree with you. I think of <laughs> you all You got to get them on. Of all the bands that played, I thought they were phenomenal. You know, I thought No Doubt was good and I thought No the, Doubt was jamming. And the Shout were yeah. really good. And uh, but but you're right. The Skeletons should be on K-Rock. Yes. They're like, they're like a ska band, like young young t early 20s guys who play like 90s ska. Uh-huh. And and they the guy shaved his head on stage into <laughs> a mohawk no. during Anyway, well, th we're going to do another Port Fest, by the way, November 18th. So oh, really? uh, we'll be announcing the bands here in the next month or so. Cool. Okay, thanks a lot. Can I say hi to someone? Sh oh, and let them know you like penis rings? Sure. <laughs> well, actually, it's his brother. Okay, fine. Well, why don't you say his name and let everybody know he has a ring? Okay, it's and Jeff. Why don't you get a ring of your own? Oh, I was, oh my gosh. Actually, I was thinking of it. <laughs> you were thinking of getting a clitoral ring? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you get one in your belly button. That's, oh, no. You know, that's nice. Do you have one there? Did no. It? No, I don't. Okay. But I um, was thinking of it. Anyway, how old's Jeff? He's 20. So you saw his penis, and you're 15, and now you're mentioning his name on the air. And you're, yeah, but actually, oh, I want to say that's great. Like, he's, like he, you're underage. She sounds like she's very mature for 15. I am. But she is still People 15. Tell me that. Mm. She's 15, though. And I'm sure Jeff mm. really appreciates <laughs> letting the world know if the Riverside Police Department's listening. Oh, my. Well, can I say hi to someone? Hi. You already did. No, no, you said say his name. Okay. I want to say hi to his brothers. Go ahead. Um, Matt and Brian. All right. Say hi to them. Mark and Brian? Matt and Brian. Oh, okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. Let's go to a guy with pimples on his butt. What line is this on? Do you know? Uh, it was on Valley 1. I think they hung up. Is it Marissa? Your name? No, it's Tamara. Tamara. Okay. So that was a bogus call. I guess so. Yeah. Okay. No, no, wait. There's four on hold, so that may be... Uh, no, no. This is... This I think that's LA2. But the pimples on the butt was bogus? I think it's LA2. Check LA2. LA2. All right. Hi, who's this? Hello? Hello? Hi, what's your name? Um, Angelina. Angelina, how old are you? Um, 14. From what city? Burbank. Okay, say hi to Deborah Harry, Blondie, on 106.7 K-Rock's Love Line. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? How are you doing? Hi. You know, you know her music, right? Yeah. Cool. What's uh, up? Huh? What's, what's your, your question? Problem? Oh, um, okay, I have um, a boyfriend, and he's making passes at my sister, I guess. She told me that. And she told me that, um, well, she's 17 and he's 15. And she told me that he, he like, is going to dump me for her. And he's just telling me all this stuff. And I asked him if it was true, and he said no. But I don't know who to believe. You know, I can't resist. I have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie, I'm sorry. I had to. 
<laughs> I've been storing it up all night long, Dr. Drew. I had to do it. That was pathetic. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm finished. You know what? You you need to collect more information, basically. I think you have to, in the meantime, trust your boyfriend if she he's never done anything to lead you to just trust him. Uh, okay. And and make an assumption that he's telling you the truth, uh, but but keep your eyes open. Be very careful. I mean, people can tell untruths. They can. And it would be a hard lesson to learn. If why would your sister lie to you? Uh, that's what I'm thinking. But why would my boyfriend lie to me, too? <laughs> you, you, you're gonna you're gonna have to just be real careful and, and just just uh, do a lot of talking. Try to try to get them both to open up to you. What's going on? Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thank you. All right. Let's go to Orange County. One. We've got Dave, 15 from Lake Forest. Dave. Yeah. Hi. You're on Love Line with Deborah Harry. Hey. Cool. Deborah. I've been a really really big fan. I mean, I have the 45 for the tightest high. 15. Oh, that's pretty big. Yeah. Uh, no kidding. I was like mm. two or three or something like that. My God. I know. I, I mean, I, it's like genetic or something like that. Ooh. Yeah. You're 15. Yeah. Wow. You yeah. sound older. Yeah, thank you. Mm. <laughs> You're welcome. Anyways, it's funny. Poor man sounds older than his age, 29. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, there was this one show when someone, he he, he had to be reminded he was 29. <laughs> uh-huh. so. Do you know, dude, my birthday's Friday. I'm really freaked out because I'm going to be the big 3 What do you want for your 40th birthday? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want for it? Seriously. For my Young birthday? Young blood. Yeah. For, 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 th- for 3 not to arrive. Could I have a few more weeks? <laughs> Ponce de Leon. We, we call you just Ponce de Leon. No, but I'm sure on. he could line you up with some fresh cells or something. <laughs> uh, we'll clone you. Right. As long as I could have a fresh stool. <laughs> Great. Okay. Go ahead, man. So anyways, like, I, I sort of want to know if I'm obsessive compulsive because... Like, um, like me. <laughs> yeah. Like you, I guess. Um, like, I have this thing, whenever I have to turn off the TV, it has to be on Channel 4 because I could be watching whatever channel... But when I turn it off, it has um, to be on you, you You are obsessive-compulsive. The question yeah. is, are these just traits, or do you have a disorder? I'm curious. Yes, I mean, really. Well, De- well it, it, it's, it's, with me, Debbie, it's really hideous. Well, listen to do what you happens. ever get that way? <coughs> like, I have to have the, the television always on Channel 7 when I turn it off. I have to... You uh, lie. You I lie. Swear. No, no, no. no I, this I, is just the beginning. No, this is only the beginning. I, uh... I yeah. mean, there's so many little things. Like, so you, you guys really relate here, you know? Yeah. Oh, I can relate. I you mean, I, relate. I do things like, um, like you know how your, your, your radio has an AM and an FM? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I always have to have the AM on 69. You know when I and, and the FM's oh, yeah. always on is mm-hmm. always on K Rock. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have some weird bathroom rituals well, I, too. Like when I take when mm-hmm. I go and do a big jobby. Oh you no! Know, you know what a jobby is, Debbie? Yes. Okay, when I when I do that, I have to like rip up a separate clean piece of toilet paper into twelve pieces and pull up the why the, twelve pieces? I don't know because for some reason that's a good number. Twelve pieces. It's and only. Then, I, thought, I, I thought the odd numbers were good for you. Boy, yeah. this must take an awful lot of time out of your life. You know what? You know what's <laughs> that's interesting? all I can say. You, know you got a lot of listen, time on your hands, babe. There was interesting <laughs> is we we had an interview with Roseanne Barr on the show a few months ago, and uh, she was saying that she was very severely obsessive compulsive. Before she went on medication, and that she was spend- <laughs> no, no, she said this. Oh, she said this in public. I'm not revealing anything she didn't. She said privately. And they took and her off the Thorazine. No, no, before they right. before they administer to her some. Uh, this looks like a job for Rose. <laughs> Well, that, that is, in fact, the medication she was taking. And it works very well for certain obsessive-compulsive disorders. But she said she would spend two hours a day doing rituals. What and it was becoming disabling. Things uh, like, like yeah. Jim's describing, turning light that switches that turning yeah. light switches on and off. It really is a disorder when it becomes long-standing, established. Do you know another and, one and, I do in the bathroom? I, I always wait. have to have Please the, tell I always me. Have to, I haven't even told you this. I always have to have the bathroom light on when I go to Loveline because the light's on. It means it's shiny, it, it gets hot, <laughs> and it means it'll be a hot show if that oh, light design no well, okay. just like it's not that way with me it's just like when my hair gets really long for some i have to, it before i go out at night i have to like have it totally wet down uh, because i feel like if i go out and my hair isn't just totally um like Steve, wetted and Steve. down i feel like so does joey joey has to do that this looks He's like a job for <laughs> it's not that bad i don't need to throw it back steve listen when it becomes long-standing, established lifestyle patterns that are disruptive or dysfunctional, then you begin thinking about disorders, character disorders. Mm-hmm. And then you begin thinking, This looks like a job no, for Rose. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. speaking of medical drugs, I was reading this thing like about Zorax, and it says it has something to do with hair loss. you're reading a thing about what? Uh, Zorax. Zorax? Mm -hmm. What is it? What is it? I don't it's know an, that it's one. An an yeah, well, it's an antiviral. Yeah, it has something to do with hair loss. It's when you ah. have a big lip herpy. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, uh, oh. you, you, you rub it on and it, of course, I wouldn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Thanks I, for telling me. I, 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 I'm trying to speak. Uh, it's very common for young people, particularly teenagers and adolescents, to have lots of obsessive compulsive features. Oh, well, then that it wouldn't affect okay. the poor man then. No, no. If, <laughs> if this becomes more established if it becomes disruptive to you then yes it may be something more serious there's a, a lot of paranoia and mood instability often associated with obsessive compulsive uh, disorders and it's something that often needs to be treated there are people who, who for whom when their depressions get worse they develop more or severe obsessive compulsive you, traits you think i'm severe <laughs> you have a disorder. No, because you're, you're, you can get out of the house in the morning or at night. You know, so well, other people can't get out. You know, that's, that's, true, that's when it gets really bad. Well, but it, it did, is disruptive. Did you to stay us. in the house for a few years, Debbie? I mean, I stayed in. I actually stayed in the house. Yes, for a long time. But but without ever leaving your home. Never, like, never. But that's agro for how, for that's how agoraphobia. Long? Though. But that's compulsive. I mean, but that's, how, uh, how long did you? Did, how long was it that you didn't go out of the house? Six years. <laughs> Are you serious? Six years? Just no. I'm lying. I made, I made that up. How long, honestly? I think I, I think I had it for about three months, but I was also hearing voices at the time, so it, I wasn't alone. It was okay. <laughs> I think my favorite Deborah Harry story is the one where, where um, uh, apparently David Byrne asked you if he would be the lead singer for the Talking Heads. He did not. He tried That's, to sing my keyboard it, player. What? Never mind. He tried to seduce your keyboard player? It's <laughs> 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 yeah. No, no, he tried to steal him away. Oh really? Yes. Oh, because I read. Because I have. I'm. I'm also like. Toe to toe I, I, on I, that I read one. the story where like he asked you and you turned him down and all this stuff. Oh well, okay. I don't Thank know. Thank you for saying the record straight about Maybe that. Maybe he did ask me. He did. Maybe I don't think so because he was the singer. Oh, uh, it's just because he said it was like when, when the days when the Talking Heads were, was just like three of them, and then they asked mm. you to be the singer because I guess at the time, well, I mean, it's not like he's some great vocalist, but mm. <laughs> wow, that would have been fun, wouldn't it? That would have been weird, but then of course I went. Then of course Speaking I don't. Speaking of a weird dude, David mm. Byrne is uh -huh. right in there. He makes me look like normal. Uh, if you've watched the, the, How do you the know? concert what video, do you for know? Stop making sense. Do you really know anything that. at all? I I just seen him. He is a strange fella. You should see the, his concert video because some of the things he the way he moves makes you wonder what what drugs he needs to be on or what drugs he is on he's not on any drugs hon well no if you read okay okay because i have like all this talking head stuff because i you know what if he's not oh, any, if he's he? not on any drugs then this looks like a job <laughs> for <laughs> Guy, who, what is your, what is your name again? Oh, our, our God, Tamara. Yeah, yeah. Tamara, Tamara, Tamara. Clay. Between Tamara and Debbie Harry, this is I am like in dream heaven. I'm in a he, beautiful he still sandwich. Calls, he still calls Heidi Heather after <laughs> six weeks, eight weeks. <laughs> the man has no mind. It's all right. Tamara, no, you no. Everybody wants to know. Do you do you you're engaged? Is that what what the deal is? I'm seeing somebody. I'm seeing somebody. Seriously, <laughs> I just moved in with them. Really? Yes. Yeah. So butt out. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Drew, can I? I need to ask you a couple of questions later. So. If you want her to do it. On what? No, no, that's okay. I'll go, go do it on the now. air. This is part of the show. Just be therapeutic. Go ahead, Tamara. Okay, this silence bit. I don't understand. When you get in a fight with somebody and mm. they're like dead silence, they won't. He won't tell. He wouldn't talk to me for two days because mm -hmm. he was upset with mm -hmm. me. It's like. Then you go to the. I was starting freaking out. I was like, talk to me. Just say something. You know. It was like. Do you know what you do? You just say. Then you're you're becoming attracted to the poor man by working with him. <laughs> then he'll start talking. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> it, 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 some people just deal with conflict that way. Uh, it, it, I need to know a lot more about him to know why he's doing that. Some people just can't tolerate conflict, and they're not used to talking about feelings, so they just withdraw. Yeah, they can't. They can't put it into words. Well, they, it, get, it, they get really. It depends. I mean, it, it's not a good precedent for a relationship or a family. You need to get people to be able to discuss their feelings. Okay. How long? How long has he not been talking to you? Oh, it was two days. We, I mean, we made up, but still, it's like he wouldn't even ask, you know, answer me if, like, I said, "Did you take out the trash?" or "Did you pick this up?" He wouldn't even, like, you know. Sounds respond. like a game to me. Yeah. Yeah. And how long have you been living together now? Um, since April? No, since August first. So it's been less than a month. Yeah. This is not good. 
Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Love is a tough game here. Usually, you know? when, when poor man has lived with somebody, though, by this point, a surfboard usually has been thrown through the air somewhere. <laughs> is, that, is that correct? Yes, that, that has happened. I've had, you, it, it, The surfboard got a ding on it from being thrown at me as opposed to being in the water. Ouch. Anyway, I, I don't think that sounds good. There's somebody on the phone. Yeah, we, we, yeah I'm still here. Didn't we help you? <laughs> yeah, you did. You just haven't hung up on me oh yet, but God. you don't have to. I can stay on for the rest of the night. <laughs> well, we're trying. Anyway, thanks a lot, man. Okay, no problem. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Okay. Okay, let's... Uh, okay, this is good. Okay, Mary, 14, Bye. from Los Angeles. <laughs> Bye, Tamara. Tamara could be available real soon. <laughs> and speaking of obs Tomorrow. obsessive format, you are, like, uh, preoccupied. Tamara, 14, from Los Angeles. No, are you there? M Mary, 14. No, he's not. He's, he's a natural guy. What? <laughs> Hello? That was really weird. Mary. Yeah? Debbie, 14, from Los Angeles. Mary. <laughs> Hello. Go Hello? ahead, Mary. What can we do for you? Oh, uh, all right. Um, I have a problem. Uh, That's weird. It's like I think I'm pregnant because... Oh, like, no. Well, no, it's not... Well, okay, can you get pregnant like a day after? Okay. You can get, peri you, you can get pregnant at any time. Period. Any time, period. Period. Even during your period. Not during it, but Absolutely. I mean, the day right after. Even during. Even, you can get pregnant anytime, period. Because people are saying, like, well, actually, the guy I was with, he said that I, I probably am probably not because I didn't ovulate. That's, what he That's a bunch of crap. There's no <laughs> way to tell whether somebody has ovulated or whether there's an ovum available uh -huh. that you can't tell. Uh -huh. Okay, so you can get pregnant anytime during your cycle, anytime. Doesn't matter when. Doesn't matter when. I How can't. Come I, uh, this I never heard before. I mean, you know, really, this is news to me. No, th this is <laughs> this is why contraception is required at all times. That there, there there is no such thing as a, for instance, rhythm method. Uh -huh. Where people try to time when it's okay to have sex when well, it's not okay. Well, then how come okay. women that can't get fertilized and can't get pregnant have you know the, this like this little six hour window that they're allowed to you know that, that's people that they have to that's, rush home and get laid? That's people who are known to have fertility problems who are on a specific ah, product. You, you can't speak to fourteen year olds and pick out which ones have fertility problems and which I see, ones don't. I see, I hear. Those that do not can get pregnant at any time during their cycle. Ah. And you think you might be pregnant, Mary? Yeah. What have you missed your period? Well, it's not going to come till next Monday, but Wednesday. But I mean, I feel like I am. How long? How long ago was the contact? Um, last Wednesday. So it's only been a few days, a week. Huh? It's, it's only been, been a week. week. It's exactly yeah. a week. How, how old was the guy? Seventeen. Hmm. Well, you can get there are home pregnancy tests <laughs> available. You can you can take next week. Uh, I know. Say. I have a a friend a friend's mother of mine. She's going to take me. If Good. Good, 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 good. But uh, it, it's it's early. There, it is a, it is a fact that some women can tell when they're pregnant almost the next day. It's this kind of a strange phenomenon that's never been explained. Some women cannot, mm -hmm. and many women believe they're pregnant when they're not. Maybe women believe they're not pregnant when they are. So it just just believing you're pregnant is not a great predictor. So let's get the test, see what's going on, and then go from there. And, and do us a favor, call us back if you can. Oh, Foreman. Yeah. I think you're great. Hey, thanks, Mary. You're not a geek. Thanks, Mary. Cool. You, you know what? What? You, you're 14. Uh -huh. You may be pregnant. You don't think I'm a geek. You're cool. <laughs> I, I like you. Thank you very much. Is there a time whenever I could come on and be a guest? In the sure, show? sure. If you want, I can put you on hold and we you can. Know, have we need to have a listener love line. We really do. But you just said. I it right know, now. but you you understand? We can't have a meeting with our boss because either uh, you are are using you know you're you're yeah. saving lives or Anne is going to Seattle this weekend. So mm. we you know we we can't even have a meeting. Mm. We need to do another listener. Don't you guys think should we do a listener love line? Mm. Look at look at there's just a humongous reaction here. <laughs> <laughs> just just sure. It's mm. an awesome. Okay, thanks, mm. Mary. Uh -huh. Okay. Wait, wait, Hi, did, hello? Didn't you want to... You hey, want... is Ann there? Yeah, who's this? This is Michael. Michael? Uh-huh. Michael the maintenance man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need Ann for? Oh, uh, hey, what's this for, man? Yeah. What's up, man? Dude, you're up late. Don't you have to be in bed so you can be all scintillating with Kevin and Bean in the morning? I know, man, I know. Hey, dude, I can't tell who is who. Who's Kevin and who's Bean when they talk? Uh, can the you... one who, who's sarcastic more... Uh, it's Bean. <laughs> Dude, I swear it's and the Kevin, same. And Kevin laughs more. Yeah. I think it's the same guy. It's like Rin and Stimpy. 
<laughs> so what do you anyway? Thank, what, thank God. I hope those those mistakes are not made in, in, in between us. Hey, Michael, the maintenance man. Listen, you're on the air. Oh, oh, oh okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi to Deborah Harry. She's our guest tonight. You know, Blondie. Yeah, Deborah. Hello. How you doing? Are you maintaining? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. Mm. You know, Michael is he's, he's a guy who's kind of like from the same school of, of in, entertainment as me. He goes with a bullhorn in the morning and, and screams at like Heidi Fleiss, you know, oh, to come man. out of her house. Oh, uh, or is in a Denny's and saying, you don't serve black people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey. I, I, and my, Michael, tell tell how, how many inches you're hung to Deborah. Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> it's still my tall. hero. <laughs> it's real. Do you, Debbie, <laughs> Woo! Debbie, honestly, does the size matter? <laughs> honestly, because women have different viewpoints. I'm just curious about yours. I guess it just depends on the size of the woman. Yeah. But, Truthfully, but to you personally, does it, does the size help? I think it just depends. It depends on the guy. So it depends on how he uses the sword. Exactly. The sword. So so let let me let, but let's give another example. You got Mike at 11 inches. Yeah. You got me at 13. No, <laughs> <laughs> no you, got, you got Mike at 11 inches. You've got Remedial Scott at 5 in the other room. Oh, our, our screener. Whoa, he's going to come screaming in um, here. And let's say both of them are <coughs> equally great with, with the instrument. Yes. Would the 11 incher then mean more? I don't know. I'd have to try. I'd have to sample the... Uh... But let's say they were both equal and one half... I have a limited imagination... <laughs> Okay. Hey, Michael. Yo. We'll put you on hold for Ann, okay? Okay. Right. Here he comes. He's in. He's Here, in. Here's the five-inch man. Let's say we have a shriveled up 40-year-old one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Let's say we have a screeter who's on suspension for a week. <laughs> hold on, Mike. Okay. You know, this guy, I swear, he is the rudest person on the phones to our listeners. Keep I, your pants on. Okay. Hotline? but oh, we got to take a break here. Hotline. Hotline. On the hotline. Yeah, take a break. We do hotline. have to take a break. Here's our phone numbers. Deborah Harry is here for another 25 minutes. L.A. and Sangerville Valley, 520-1067. Orange County, 977-1067. San Fernando Valley, 764-1067. She's come out with a new CD, which is entitled... Debravation. Is it really? Yes. And we should play another cut. We will play one more cut before the end of the show. And, of course, everybody knows Deborah Harry is Blondie. We're from Blondie. One of the... All-time great K-Rock bands, mm -hmm. still going strong. When are you going to play a concert? Also, when 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 are you going to be in concert? Probably not till the fall. The fall of what? <laughs> the <laughs> Roman, Roman Empire, Empire right? <laughs> now, for soon, soon. Okay, so this is just m merely to introduce people to the new music. Yeah, you know the yada yada. And you know what, Rodney, if you're listening, I did not schedule Debbie ahead of being on your show. It was done without my knowledge. Because we got to admit, Rodney was the first person to play Blondie, wasn't he? In the world, pretty much. Um, mm, uh, yeah, close, yeah. He's and he's a real good personal friend of yours, also. Yeah. Rodney, if you're listening, call in. Call in on the hotline because we want to put you on the air. Okay. He's pissed at you and he's not calling in. No, he, I, he, Rodney. He's probably on the line right now. No, that's Michael, the maintenance man, at 11 oh. inches. Oh. oh. Okay, anyway, here's the phone numbers. L.A. and Sangerba Valley, 520-1067. Orange County, 977-1067. San Fernando Valley, 764-1067. Or our fax machine at 818 or 213 fax or 310-5201-FAX here at K-Rock. And now, another K-Rock concert. They're back. Wingo, Wingo. It's a dead man's party. Friday, October 29th at Irvine Meadows Amphitheater. The Budweiser Concert Series presents the return of the Halloween band with Boingo Boingo. The party that turns Los Angeles upside down is back. The Halloween Bash with Boingo Boingo. Budweiser brings you the party to end all parties. Friday, October 29th at Irvine Meadows Amphitheater. Tickets for the bash on sale this Saturday morning at 9. At Ticketmaster, including music, Cross Robinson's May and Tower are charged by Bob. Brought to you by Budweiser. Proud to be your bud. Produced by Avalon. 
musicians. No other time will you find Roland at 69% off. $1,600 keyboards, just $499. No other time will you find Boss at 85% off. Pedal effects from just $19. No other time will you find deals like these on guitars, amps, drums, keyboards, pro sound, and accessories. No other time than this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday during Guitar Center's 29th anniversary extravaganza. Fender, Gibson, Roland, Emu, Tascam, every leading maker, exclusive special buys, deals in every department. Store-wide savings of 50, 60, 70, up to 85% off. And get this. During Guitar Center's $100,000 anniversary sweepstakes, win CD players, camcorders, a trip to London, even a brand new Chevrolet Camaro Z28. It's all happening this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's Guitar Center's 29th anniversary extravaganza. Hey, it's me again, alive at Universal Studios. Where are you? Still sitting there? Still haven't ridden Back to the Future? Okay, I get it. It's too much for you. All the turns, the twists, slamming your body, jamming your brain, smashing the time barrier. You're a little chicken. I mean, you're just not ready for, like, a flying roller coaster. Okay, that's cool. But you and your buds will find a ton of action at Universal, like Backdraft, 10,000 degrees, walls of flame, river of fire, ring any bells, and the hottest rock show in this world or the next. Screaming demons, wailing guitars, Beetlejuice's whole mega rock blowout. So that's it. Well, not it. There's a whole day and night full of ride shows and stuff at Universal, but that's it for me. I'm gonna go ride back to the future again, and you, you're still sitting there. Go figure. From Universal Pictures, add a bit of Ghost and a dab of It's a Wonderful Life, says Sneak Previews, and you have one of the summer's most enjoyable, heartfelt movies. Absolutely wonderful. Robert Downey Jr. and Charles Grodin, Heart and Souls, rated PG-13, may be inappropriate for children under 13. Now playing at theaters everywhere. Cheap Auto Parts, we specialize in saving you money on all of your do-it-yourself maintenance needs. This week, look in your local newspaper or mailbox for Chief's Giant Insert, featuring store-wide savings, like Castrol Motor Oil, single weight, just 99 cents a quart. Multi-weights, only $1.09 a quart, limit 12. Autolite spark plugs are just 59 cents each standard after rebate, and 69 cents each resistor after rebate, limit 16. Keep your car's engine clean with Fram air filters, starting as low as $2.89 each, limit two. And the best part of all is Chief's low price guarantee, which promises to match any competitor's price on any item every day. So you'll never have to waste time shopping around for the best prices. You'll find them at Chief. But remember, Chief's savings insert sale is good only through Sunday. Chief Auto Parts, home of the low price guarantee. Hi, this is Art Old Boy Alberto. Now, have I got the hottest summer deal ever, and I don't mean maybe. In celebrating the Old Boy Alberto 75th anniversary, how do you like it? Free admission to Raging Waters at San Dimas for the Old Boy Alberto Splash Bash Party. Just bring two empty bags, many Old Boy Alberto beef jerky or smoked sausage sticks, 15 16 ounce or larger, and get in free to Raging Waters on August the 20th. It'll be an evening of fun, Old Boy Alberto style. That's right. Try the flavor of Old Boy Alberto beef jerky and smoked sausage sticks then bring two labels per person and have an evening of fun in the sun at Raging Waters. Two labels per person, and there's no limit to how many people can come. Pick up your favorite flavor of Old Boy Alberto beef jerky and smoked sausage sticks. Remember, August 20th from 5 to 11 p.m. for free admission to our great Splash Bash party. Compliments of Old Boy Alberto. See ya. The first 106 people after 8 a.m. at Raging Waters this Friday get in free. Get Alberto beef jerky at all area Albertson stores. Alan Kay, college student and Army Reservist. I joined the Army Reserve for the college money, and the mental discipline I've learned has definitely helped with my studies. Greg McPhee, college student and Army Reservist. Being in the Army Reserve puts less of a burden on my parents to support me through college, and it looks good on your resume. Army Reserve, money for college and more. Be all that you can be in the Army Reserve. Call 1-800-USA-ARMY, paid for by the U.S. Army Reserve. Okay, everybody, on your knees, communion time.
And that's new Debbie Harry, and the song is called Communion. And it's from the uh, re- new CD, Debrivation. Is that the name of it? Debrivation. On 106.7 K-Rock. We got one more segment. Debbie, one more time with a love line jingle. A one, and a two, and a one, two, three, four. Love line. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. What a beautiful rendition. We That's got- for all the moose. Okay. Here is uh, here's a few faxes. It goes, hey, hey, Deb, I am your biggest fan, not in a psycho weird Kathy Bates misery way, but just because I've always loved your music. Proof, I own the Out in the Streets 45. What, what's the Out in the Streets 45? Very, very rare. Was that when you first started? Very, 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 okay. very, very rare. Quest- <laughs> questions. When will your album be out? Uh, next week. Okay. Are you playing anywhere this weekend in L.A.? No, right? No, no, I'm not playing. Oh. I'm here, you know. Are you going to bring your life story to film ever? (laughs) (laughs) A major feature will be. Okay, there's your answer to that. Sorry, I have no love line question. I'm happily married. No penis ring, no penis envy, no penis even. Just a normal girl who's always Doug Blondie. Signed, Lisa. Yay, Lisa. Debbie Harry, you're cooler than the Catwoman, badder than Wendy O. Williams, and juicier than a Kiwi. Question: What's the biggest drawback to be to be to being? Oh, excuse me. What's the what's the biggest drawback to bring in the music business? Or I guess what's the biggest drawback to being in the music business? <laughs> That's what I think they're trying to ask. Doing radio shows. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> but what is honestly? Is there something you just hate about it? No. Is there anything you hate? Or you know, I hate a lot of things about it. <laughs> but then there's a lot of things I like about it. Okay, poor man, your fart was weak. I thought you said you ate Cheetos. Come yeah, on. I thought it was weak. Come on, do a real cheek flapper. My tape recorder's rolling. Woo! And last but not least, do you mind if we read a slag fax aimed at you, Deborah Harry? Go ahead, slag me off. Poor sexy, who is this bimbo? <laughs> <laughs> you need to have good guests like Cypress Hill back <laughs> on. <laughs> Who's that? They're they're like the uh, they're they're sort of like alternative rappers who smoke ah. lots of Rasta. They, they actually they're a very cool band. Ah. They almost got us arrested in the studio when they were here. They were rolling up a fatty in the a studio, big fatty in front of Walt Disney when they were trying to decide whether or not we were going to do a pilot. They were up here observing the show, and there's a big green bud leaf that mm. was down there. Mm. Okay. Anyway, well, let's go back to the calls. We got a full group of calls. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. You remember the uh, the thirteen year old who said our screener Scott was like rude? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we've got this person on the line. What's your name? Steve. Steve, how old are you? I'm thirteen. From what? Oh, I, I just said you're thirteen. From what city? Off of Orange. Okay, Scott said apparently you had a bogus call and you told him to fire truck off. Was that what well, he said? Yeah, after he said all those bad things. Do, he, was he completely rude to you? Yeah, he was like, "Go to hell." But he he said you were like you had a bogus call ready to well, go. Well, no, it wasn't. Like, you had those calls before, and, uh... Okay, uh, well, tell us your love problem right now, then. Okay, I have, like, two, uh, just, like, uh... Sometimes, uh, I can't go to the bathroom, and... Like, my penis bleeds after... Your penis bleeds after yeah. you try to pee? It just happened, like, twice. You, you, you haven't been seen by a doctor about this? Oh, not really. That, that has to... You have to do that immediately. Uh, you may not be emptying your bladder all the way. There may be something obstructing your bladder. And if there is excessive pressure building up in your bladder, it can actually back up into your kidneys and cause kidney damage. So it is extremely important that you get looked at and figure out where this bleeding is coming from and why you have difficulty evacuating your bladder. That that's a serious me- It could be a serious medical problem. It needs to be evaluated. What, what could it be? Well, it can be a lot of things. It could be, I mean, many, many kinds of different growths and, and, and congenital abnormalities even can cause difficulty in the bladder. It could be stones. It could be a lot of things. But it has to be evaluated. It has to be treated. It's, it is extremely important. Okay, go to a doctor, Steve. Okay. And no, other- I have another problem. Okay. Okay, can I say it? What? Can I say it? You, yeah. What do you have? And I have a problem, another one. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Okay, uh, I have this girlfriend. She's black. And uh, she's like real pressure me about sex. Like, uh, my mom won't let me go to see her. Uh, she'll know we'll have sex or something. How old is she? Uh, she's also 13. In what city do you live in? In, uh, or I live in, uh, L.A. What? I live in L.A. I'm in a friend's house. And she wants you to have sex at 13? Yeah. Are you ready for that? Well, yeah, I think. No. 
Okay. That's something you can't just kind of think about. You really have to be sure about it. Yeah, it sounds to me like rather than the race thing, maybe you're not ready to have sex yet. How can you let somebody else decide for you? Oh, I don't want to decide. You'll have to decide for yourself. You mean her parents say his parents saying she he can't go out with a black person? You mean Debbie? No, it means that his her girl his girlfriend pressuring him oh. to have sex. Yeah, don't don't do it, Steve. Thanks for your call, man. And listen, sorry about the screener. If he does it again, we're going to suspend him for a week. Okay. All right, thanks. Okay. Bye bye. All right, Debbie Harry's up here. We got one more fax we got to read, and then we're going to crank to another. Is it another slag off one? It's, it's, no, nothing against you. We had Cindy Lauper uh, on the show. Bad. Do you remember when she was talking about her panties? Cindy Lauper? Yeah. No. Slut. Do, do you? <laughs> Slut. You don't like Cindy Lauper? <laughs> 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 it says, poor man, remember when you had that New York cum collector, Cindy Lauper, on Loveline, and you asked her about her panties? <laughs> Well, she was on a certain shock jock show talking about these chauvinist pig DJs who harassed her on the air. She mentioned the incident about her sweaty panties, but she didn't mention your name or K Rock. What? You know, it, it wasn't. It wasn't you. That, it, that didn't happen. Are you sure? Yeah, that did not happen. She made it all up. See? No, no. It might have been some other some other show, but she was she was actually a very good guest and gave some good advice, and that, that did not happen. Okay. Not, not She's a very record. sincere okay. person. She was. She was very good. Then we got a comment to Jenna, the Jen Torturers, who were on the other night. Tell that piercing bitch that maybe when she sews up her lips, when she sews her lips together permanently, you consider putting a keychain on your cock. Until then, she can sew up her sushi bar. <laughs> You're no geek. Ooh. <laughs> David the Chameleon Harris. Now that's right, a fan. Dave. That's a fan. Dave, that's all right, ma'am. Okay, where should we go next, Dr. Do Point it out. You pick. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's go to LA One. We've got Andrew, yeah. twenty-seven from Los Angeles, with Deborah Harry Blondie on Loveline. Hi. Hi. Oh, hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Well, um, I know you, you have a problem, so me. you know. I met you at uh, when you performed at Poop oh, in New York. Uh huh. Um, is this being recorded? I mean, probably. We're, we're, yeah. we're, on, we're on the air live we're right now. Air. Oh, great, man. All right. Well, I'm. Well, let's see. Abby Lanson, remember? Oh, right. Yeah, how you doing? I'm good, I'm good. And poor man, I met you Sunday. Where'd you meet me at? At Lori's house. Oh, you were at Lori's? Yeah, I was playing with the poor baby. Oh. 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 Cutest kid in the world. Huh? Cutest kid in the world. Really? Yep. What, are you a publicist? No, not a publicist. You were just a friend of Lori's? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, well nice to talk to you again. Okay, well, uh, my problem is yeah. uh, I was in a relationship with a guy for... Uh, first one five years, second one was for three years, always been very sexually active with men, and but loved women, you know, prior to that, and for the last nine months have not, I've not been able to uh, date anyone. And That's I'm good, you need a feeling very frigid and actually feeling that maybe being gay is not the way I should be. Well, great. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, so what? You know, just go with it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well. What else can you do? You got no choice. <laughs> now, you weren't aroused by the poor baby when you were playing with that, my kid. No, no, no. <laughs> we were shooting bow, you know, bow and arrows. Mm. All right. Okay. Well, know. yeah, I'm with Debbie. Just when you f yeah, take a, maybe take you're a just break. bored, you know? Huh? Yeah. Maybe you're just bored. Well, bored? you know, I mean, I thought I was gay for like the last 10 years, but... Well, well, you can change. Oh, you're allowed. Yeah. You, you can change. May, for some reason, you're just developing some confusion about your sexual identity. Is, yeah. Is something else going on in your life? Are you depressed? Um, no, not depressed, but I chose a job that keeps me busy for about 15 hours a day. Okay. Well, you're just going to... I mean, maybe it's time to get into some individual therapy and, and explore some of these issues if, if it's creating yeah. some trouble, discomfort for you. On the other hand, you may just want to sort of hang with your feelings, listen to them, be aware of them... Uh, uh, just, just try to figure out where you're at with these things, and uh, and maybe you'll be able to sort it through on your own. Yeah. Just you're confused, and that's okay. I mean, you might, maybe you'll figure it out. Well, I'm definitely feeling the need to, you know, raise a family. Want, you know, want to have children. Oh, that's nice. And uh, well, I don't know. That's it's just created a dichotomy guy, in my guy, life. Guy, just continue to take a break. You yeah. know, until you're ready. I mean, people go through that. I mean, I've taken breaks from you know stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yep. yep well, yep. it was great talking to you guys. Thanks, ma'am. All right, Endeavor. Bye. You're definitely the greatest thing on the planet. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks. You know, that's the way I feel about me. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, thanks sure a lot. Are. 
Actually, I'm the most insecure guy on the earth. Holly, 18 from Laguna Hills. Holly? Hey, what's up? Now, you go to the same school as the girl who's a lesbian that attends your high school, right? I sure do. Who's been, been, been uh, run after by skinheads. Yep, me too. Oh, you too. Are me you too. a lesbian wow. also? Very much so. At Laguna oh. Hills High School? Yes. Do you know the other girl? Oh, yeah, we're like buds. Oh. So what did you want to say? I Re- just wanted real to... quick, because we're almost out of time. All right. I was just wanted to say that Laguna Hills is the most conservative piece of crap city in the world. But, I mean, but they do have a nice mall. <laughs> Not really. Um, the problem with homophobia at our school is just getting humongous, and I've been having my car keyed every week. I mm. yelled at my window. Do the police know about this? No, not yet. Why not? Um, just haven't proceeded with you that yet. You should be reporting each of these episodes. Yeah. Um, so, so Laguna Hills is definitely a gay bashing city. It sure is, and I would like well. you to flush it. You know how you do the toilet. It, oh, you want me to flush Laguna think, Hills? Yeah. Oh. You, you know what? And the girl I dated from there dumped me. So this. Wait, is wait, but before you do, I, I would like to get some some uh, other people perhaps to call in tomorrow night. And we have a show to hear what the what the other side of the story is and see what's going on with those people. Right. Yeah, so if you, like go to, if you go to Laguna Hills High School or you live in Laguna Hills, we want to hear from you tomorrow night. But until then, Laguna Hills, grow up, ride this too. <laughs> Surf it. And on that happy note, Deborah Harry, thank you for being on Love Line. Let's hear it for Deborah Harry, folks. Lundy. Good night. Thank you. Wouldn't it only figure that the show would end with a toilet flush? I love you all like crazy. Yes, it, it would figure. <laughs> thank you so much. And I much. thought your fart was pathetic. Oh, really? Was it, was it pathetic or boring? Oh, okay. All right. Anyway, that's it. We're going to take care of some business. Carol QFM Pasadena, Los Angeles. And Debbie uh, will probably hear a lot of her new music on K-Rock very soon. You'll be with Rodney Sunday night also, right? Yes. Okay. It's K-Rock.